Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzone. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy, it is John Boy time. I am your host, John Francis Fahey. The COVID kid, COVID barely 18. Joining me as ever, I'm afraid. You should be. Skeet lovers pizza. Three children stacked on each other in a trench coat, disguising themselves as an adult man. Each child, of course, shredded, ripped with a huge veiny cock. Two gay, one bi. All uncut. (laughs) Trying to get into this porno? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, some poppers, yeah. you know, a couple of poppers. Aaron Joseph Peter, that's me, aka R. Balla, aka Richard Baller, yes, aka Roger Baller, <laughs> <laughs> aka Trevor Mad Mac. <laughs> hey, uh, Sam Speed. <laughs> um, can I say something? No, no, no. You have to uh, say uh, first to your right, my left is the handsomest son to of my a- right. My left. Your left. And, yeah. Handsome Matt Brousseau. Yeah. Hi. Bonjour. Uh, aloha. <laughs> Frenchman Henchman. M- Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo, dude. Mahalo. Welcome to the Tiki 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 <laughs> room. <laughs> we just got back from Disney uh, oh, Land. That's right. And uh, that, was a, that was a nice fun day. It was, it was a nice, nice fun, fun day. Yeah, day. Curated by this, the, the, uh, the, the Jokay and... Uh, 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 the, the the Katie Merriams, the the, uh, Kevin, Anderson. uh, the Kevin Andersons, uh, good people. Uh, it was it was a real Love nice it was a real nice time, and um, you know, uh, just fun in the sun and some a lot of sun, yeah. a lot of fun. You know, something I heard overheard something there that I really I heard a rumor. <laughs> I heard a ru- no, oh, we were in line for the Jean Gare cruise. Mmm. And there was yes. a, uh, a family there, mom. And Tra- the mom, you know, a traditional, traditional family, nuclear. which is oppressive, of course. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, but the mom, I believe, was uh, what you would call a hottie boom body. She was a hottie boom body. She was a she was a very pretty young mother, in I would imagine her late thirties. Mother. Is your children over forty and strong? You can't let them ride the ride tonight. Jungle Cruise. He really goes for it. What is he doing? It's a rocket ammo. <laughs> Jungle Cruise in line, and um, she's got three kids. The dad's there. Uh, he's present. <laughs> Seems like a nice family. She's just, you know, she's not like a hot, oh, fucking super, oh, super hot, hope smoking hot milk. Oh, God. Just a real pretty nice. She seemed to have, you know. A lovely woman. A lovely woman. And uh, probably a listener. <laughs> definitely, def- and definitely engaging with everyone's. In, you know, the family's engaging with, you. and it, the the youngest one, the young guy, the young boy. He seen. I don't know if he was really a little uh, hesitant about the ride. Maybe he's afraid of the jungle or uh, Grim tigers, Grim or... rhinos. Uh, who knows? But uh, she. I mean, he's you know he's he's, he's like eight. Hey, he's got a lot of uh, imagination uh, menu options, right? And nice. uh, it seemed in in. And uh, she looked at him, and, and, and I, I was just kind of paying attention, right? Because I was looking at her. Yeah. <laughs> I was just listening to the conversation. And, and she yeah, goes, yeah, she, listening she goes, to she, the conversation. Yeah. You were looking at the taters in the toilet. No, I was not. <laughs> Come on. The taters were looking great. And, I mean, and just, what did he say? <laughs> the mom said to the young boy, do you want to be Peter Pan or do you want to be Peter Parker? Whoa. <laughs> and it blew my mind. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, that's perfect. What did he say? I don't fucking know. I'm stealing the wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He, he uh, I, I was wearing a Spider-Man hat, actually. And so I, like, looked, I, I looked at her and, like, yeah, I was like, yep. And then he turned and looked at me and I turned the hat around with the hat. <laughs> oh. Like, Your mom's right, dude. Yeah. Do you want to be Peter Pan, the boy that never grows up? 
or the one that accepts responsibility. Park. And yeah, it's really nice. Damn, dude, that's deep. It was dude. really good, and I was just like, man, wish you were my mom <laughs> slash wife. <laughs> I'll call you mom. Do whatever you want. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really good, and I think Do it's you a have really a first aid kit <laughs> <laughs> with some SPF sixty five. So that's a question that we all should ask ourselves, Mother. Do you want to be the little kid that doesn't grow up? Live out there in fucking Never Neverland with the Lost Boys. You want to be the kid with the dog? Oh yeah. Or I do you want to be Peter Parker? <laughs> because it's not just with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. With great responsibility also comes power. It's true. Hmm. And I don't, 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 don't. I don't want to be either. Just take it. Just take it. You want to be Spider-Man. You want to be Peter I don't want to be Spider-Man. It's a, it's a choice. You got to make it. You're asking the guys that moved to Los Angeles to pursue absurd dreams if they want to be Panner Parker? <laughs> I don't want to be either. <laughs> Man. You got a choice. You got to make it. Gun to your head. I do? Gun in your head. Why is there a gun to my head? Who put this gun here? This is fucking Never Neverland. Jesus man. Christ! Is it the, it's Queens or Neverland? America's a mess. <laughs> it's always guns to our head. Is it the Jackson Neverland? Yeah. The nice. I like how there was a ranch. Bubbles. There's something about a ranch that really is just like. <laughs> it's a Neverland ranch. It's a hidden valley. <laughs> yeah, now the fence goes. <laughs> pretty relaxed out here. Mm. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was a nice moment. It um, was really good, and she she seemed like a nice, a wise woman. And in that moment, I was just really. Uh, you want to be Peter Pan or Peter Parker? Huh? You want to go to jail? You want to go home? <laughs> Wait, you want what? <laughs> Wait, who, oh, who, who, who goes to jail and who goes home? It's from the Motion Picture Training Day. Oh, okay. Um, I think we should uh, uh, say that Aaron, you've given this a lot of thought. I have. And you said if somebody can. Mock up a very good. Yeah, this, we're now switching gears. Yes, we are. Uh, uh, if if somebody could do all you beautiful, wonderful, talented people, artists, out there, artists, uh, listen, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the the dark rose Dallas types, uh, yeah, or even uh, somebody cool I don't even know about yet. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Yeah, if some if one of you fuckos <laughs> can put nice. together a one of some fucking really cool, a believable, a believable Michelangelo's David Duchovny. Yes. It's a statue. I will get a tattoo. No, it's, just, it. it's just some Photoshop. Well, Matt, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Well, the real friends. Yeah. There. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm busy. No, I'm, bu- I'm busy thinking happy thoughts, learning to fly. You told me to pick. <laughs> the gator. <laughs> oh, you'd be the gator. Yeah. I, I would be in Peter Pan. I'd be the gator in Loki. <laughs> yeah, ideally. He also I t- bites a hand off, I t- too. I, t- I take a third way. You know what I mean? I bridge the two. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah. I'll bring the Marvel to the Paniverse. <laughs> pan, pan. All both wholly owned subsidiaries of the Disney Corporation. <laughs> I'm pansexual. Whoa. True. What How about pa- personal uh, pan? You don't see gender. Pizza. Personal pan pizza? P- personal pansexual pizza. Oh, I love that. Oh, pansexual pizza. Yeah. I get you. Well, it's personal. <laughs> and it's sexual. I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, I do. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> make it sexy. Yeah. Make it, make it good. Make it realistic. I don't yeah. want some weird fucking like you know, oh, Picasso. You don't shit. have a choice. And there, you know, it, you've put it out there. Someone's gonna make it. Yeah. Someone's gonna make it. Yeah, but 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 you have to, you have to like it to I get it tat- like it. to get well, it tattooed like, on you. Yeah. So, so, sure. Sure. Yeah. You have to like but, it. But, you know, yeah. Make, go out there and make you, make your own weird stuff. If you can make you know, it good folks. enough, uh, uh, Jorge uh, Riverall. Uh, uh, oh, he's sick. Uh, he's he's demented. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. But yeah, what, anybody. What a lovely uh, sick man. Oh, Richard Park is a great illustrator. Um, and he's sick. Uh. You know, um, the, the multitudes of talent out there, you guys. Yeah. So uh, basically, you're asking Richard or Jorge. Hey, no, 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 no. I'm, it's, I'm it's, kidding. It's, it's, I'm it's kidding. Out, it's out there for anybody. It's to out really there for take anybody. A crack at it. I mean, and the best, uh, the best one uh, will win, or all or, of them will fail. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. And where will you put it? That's a great question. Thank you. Uh, open, open for uh, suggestions. You're gonna open what? Oh my god. It's open for. Oh. It's an open topic. It's an open debate. I will okay, well, we'll choose we'll, later. We'll cross. Depends we'll, on how good it is and what it looks like. We'll cross the perineum when we get there. Okay. Well, maybe it is the perineum. <laughs> it's the gooch. Yeah. 
No, man, I understand you have some... Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 I have a profile. You have a profile? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that about? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I, should, I don't... I, I guess I have... Wait on me. Do we need to take a break or... No. Okay. Cool. We can just hop right in because we will take a break. Let's jump. But not right now. Let's jump. Um, I wanted to talk about a notorious rascal. I love rascals. Notorious rascal? Yeah. Well, uh, Rascalian? Th- my, my, my two sources for this, uh, one is uh, The Great Rascal uh-huh. by Jay Monahan, and the other is The Nor- Notorious Life of Ned Buntline by Julia Bricklin. Uh, Notorious Rascal, this man. Oh, really? Uh, I both say Notorious in the title. Only, right? only one does. One says Rascal, the other says Notorious. Mm. Yeah, well, I wasn't really paying No, you, you know, you're 50 50 on that. Uh, he was uh, author, soldier, father. Mm. Love many it. times Love it. Husband Many times A shit mm. Definitely All the time Kind of <laughs> Wow And uh, creator of One of the Stories of America Peter Parker Peter Parker Not Peter Parker Shit Steve did go So <laughs> his, his real name was Edward Zane Carroll Judson Oh god <laughs> Of course it is. <laughs> Edward Edward Zane Carroll Judson. Zane Carroll yes. Judson, okay. Yes. Zane's a good name. Yeah, E-Z-C Judson. Easy c baby. <laughs> easy c g easy do g <laughs> You see, he was born in March, perhaps, in 1821 in Delaware County, New York. Probably Stamford. No one's really sure. Stanford, New York. Who's to say? Stanford or Stam? Stam. 1821. Don't tell me that. Uh, he would later write that it was a turbulent storm when he was born, but that was just kind of his thing to take real, real life and <laughs> hyperbolize. I, I think you were just getting shot out of a vagina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, for there was for a, you, it was a I turbulent remember, storm. I remember, I remember that day there was a crazy <laughs> earthquake. Yeah. Was, the sun coming, rose I was going, immediately. I was going through a tunnel. <laughs> Everything was wet. It smelled like shit. <laughs> uh, th- this area he was born is uh, north of the Catskills, uh, New York, west of Albany in northern New York. It's a turnpike town, a, a place where people would stop men, rough men passing through for bigger things. Uh, Stagecoaches with last week's news. Uh-huh. That's how they found out <laughs> about the world is what happened last week. Someone would come into town and be like, they're all dead. And they'd be like, shit. Shit. Holy shit. Man. <laughs> they probably stink by now. <laughs> just, just last week they were alive, <laughs> which was wow. two weeks ago, of course. Hmm. Uh, as a child, his father, uh, Judson's father, was a wannabe author, but he be- eventually became a school principal, and he moved the family to Bethany, Pennsylvania. It's about a 28-hour walk south from Stamford. As the crow flies. Yeah, as the crow walks. As the crow But, you know, they're very, yeah, they're, they're, they're walkers. Yeah. Uh, he never had any toys as a kid, but he hunted and fished, and he would later write to his only sibling, uh, his sister Irene, that these were his happiest days of his life. Dear uh, Irene. <laughs> The Easy memories here. <laughs> the memories of the fishing were wild, man. <laughs> Your brother. <laughs> <laughs> Easy CG. Love you. Uh, then in Bethany, his, his, his dad went bankrupt and uh, moved the family to Philadelphia, the school uh, where then his dad would become a lawyer. What was the question? The school principal went bankrupt? Yes. And then went into law. <laughs> yes, and then moved to Philadelphia. So, yeah, he never really, never really settled, but, you know, they briefly were in this you know, idyllic wilderness, hunting and fishing, and then moved and moved. How do you go bankrupt as the principal? A lot of bad ideas. <laughs> the children all dumb. Well, I mean, he, he <laughs> wanted to be helped. He wanted to be an author, so I imagine he put money into that. Hmm. And, uh, you know, there's... Oh, okay. You okay. know, printing books back then, or even writing books back then, is a fucking pain in the ass. Sure, sure. How now, to be a principal. <laughs> you know, Ed, 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 Edward's dad wanted him to be a lawyer, uh, but he didn't want to be a lawyer. And one time when he was 13, he took his uh, his, his father's law books and he, he threw them into the fire. Holy shit. And then his dad just beat the shit out of him. And uh, he would later write a story about this, a third person account. Uh, you know, he, he would often write stories that were based on real life. And so he would then later write a story in a third person account of this happening to someone. Yeah. But it was very <laughs> much him. Some precocious child threw the law books in the file. <laughs> that <laughs> genius of a child was too good for his family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But his father bestowed upon him the most royal of ass whippings. <laughs> I mean, he really fucking cooked him. <laughs> he really cooked him. 
<laughs> that kid, that kid with the tremendous penis. Yeah, whose dad was jealous of his. His father was jealous of his thick, veiny cock, <laughs> so he had to beat the shit out of it. But it only made the dong bigger. <laughs> it was kind of like a Pinocchio situation. <laughs> you catch it in that respect. You catch it up. This random child. <laughs> Whoever he is, the lady's lucky. <laughs> and his name was CG Eggies. <laughs> So and O M U F G's. So he's probably ten, not thirteen. And, and he would later claim that he ran away immediately, but that's not true. Uh, he actually he was around for a few more years, and then at age thirteen, uh, he joined the navy, which was a thing you could do because yeah. I guess people had to mop or something. I don't know what the rules were back then, but there weren't many. <laughs> thirteen, he joins the navy. Yeah, yeah. And he's a uh, he's he's quickly promoted to midshipman. Because uh, at one point, uh, his boat that he's on is flipped over by a ferry, and he saves a couple of the, of the seamen on the boat. Is nice. it because it was a ferry? <laughs> yeah. I guess if you're making connections, sure. Mm-hmm. Connections! <laughs> Catch it! <laughs> and, and, and used to say that uh, uh, he, he, was, he was a dick. Like, he was a 13, and he would... If he he was constantly trying to to get ahead to the point where if he felt anybody was disrespecting him disrespecting him he would threaten them to a fight Ugh. and he would get beat up but all of course at this time people were like got a lot of gumption yes gumption was big back then yeah, yeah. now yeah. is that related to moxie <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's hand in hand, hand you know hand, yeah. Yeah. fist in face yeah uh, but you know so he saves a couple people he's 13 14 now and uh, he gets promoted to midshipman <laughs> And that child just offered to whip my ass. I admire him. <laughs> oh, when he grows into that dick, he's Ooh. really going to be something else. I tell you. <laughs> right now, we got to keep him toward the back of the boat to steer the guy because <laughs> it's so big. I think he's juicing with moxie or uh, hug. maybe gumption. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. But I'll be damned if he, we don't lay anchor. When we lay anchor, we don't fucking move. <laughs> he's the one who tells us how deep the water is <laughs> and how cold. <laughs> <laughs> What's at the bottom? <laughs> uh, so then, he, uh, if, if, after a couple of years, he sent off Mark Dong because we have to mark the Dong. That was his name. <laughs> <laughs> after after a few years in the Navy, he's then sent. He's, he's shipped off. He's stationed in Florida, where he sees some action in the Seminole War. And uh, he would write. He would write stories. You know, the some of the first popular stories he would go on to write years later were about guys in the fighting. Uh, uh, you're fighting shipmen, and it'd just be like him recreating memories, you know, and, and hyperbolizing his own me- his own times in the Seminole War and in Florida. Mm. Kind of like that movie Big Fish. Yeah, never saw it. Me neither. I haven't seen it either. But oh my god, none of us have seen it. It's, but it's kind of like that. that you know? Seems like this. That's movie. the dumbest fucking observation. Thank you. How could you say that? Well, we know it's Tall Tales, man. It's nostalgic. Big Fish. See, huh. the, see yeah. the trailer. Yeah. You know, catch it in IMAX. <laughs> Uh, it, None it, of us have seen the movie, but and we're me, like, yeah, it's like that. But I mean, tell me I'm wrong. I can't. I haven't seen it. See, uh, he, he's uh, he's in Saint Augustine, uh, uh, treating survivors of um, uh, a Seminole attack. The Seminoles had, had attacked this guy Jacob Hausman. Uh, Jacob, this guy Jacob Hausman. <laughs> I maybe should do a, a Patreon thing. But he basically created like an on an island uh, where Saint Augustine was in Florida. He basically created like his own mini empire. Where he controlled the entire island, had slaves, had people in prison. Jesus, it was it was insanely. He like made himself sheriff, sheriff, uh, sheriff. <laughs> uh, it was it, just insanely corrupt. And uh, but anyway, so he's in Saint Augustine. Uh, Judson is treating treating survivors of this attack, and that, that's where he meets uh, uh, Severina Tecla, and that's his first wife. Uh, he's eighteen or nineteen. She's twenty two. Be the only time in his life that his wife was uh, older. Uh, he described her as quote. Venusian height, Venus, uh, her figure like that unto which nature modeled and then in anger broke the mold which formed it because it excelled. Oh my God, that's good. Yeah. You must excel. She Russian? Yes. She Russian? Uh, no, I, I, I believe uh, Florida. Severina <laughs> Tekla? Yeah. I, she's not Russian. Maybe, maybe some spell, distant how Russian. How do you spell the last name? Uh, T-E-C-L-A. Maybe it was. Maybe she was Tesla. Maybe she was. Uh, in, in a later letter, uh, in that same letter, what he wrote about her, he then writes that she has capsized his inkstand 
and pulling his ears and that he must st- stop writing because she has blown out the light. And then he writes, God bless the ladies. God is, bless the ladies. This was, uh, I mean, he was, uh, you know, he wanted to be a writer and he was a writer. I have to, I have and, to stop writing now because she spilled my ink on the, and yeah. that's like, <laughs> like HP Lovecraft used to do that where he's like writing it at, and at the end he's slowly going insane and like, <laughs> yeah, or like in Monty he's writing Python, about writing like, it. the mm-hmm. castle of art. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, he's, yeah. Instead of painting the scene, he's just telling you what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you really had to stop writing, to you'd stop writing and there'd be a God a bless, God on bless the ladies. I'll yeah. tell you, you know, that's not where I was circumcised. That's actually high tide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the mark there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, my father beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Only made me stronger. <laughs> Oh, I'm still writing. Oh, excuse me. Oh, uh, I must ha- go to bed. Have I told you how much of God bless the ladies? <laughs> yeah, so he uh, he then Venusian he, in height was Venus. In <laughs> I don't think so. It's just uh, you know he's you know he's he's, he's, he's eighteen nineteen. Oh, yeah. He's just you know he's this putting, is his white stains. Yeah, this is he's just putting words nice. together. <clears throat> but uh, he he leaves uh, the navy uh, without uh, permission, and he marries her. And they moved to Pittsburgh, uh, where he and his father put together a literary magazine. And uh, it's there when he's uh, 1920 now, where he takes the nom de plume, the pen name of Ned Buntline. Ned, uh, you know, short for Edward. Yes. Buntline is the bot- the rope at the bottom of a square sail. So, you know, he spends these formative oh. times in the Navy with the sails. Very and good. So he takes it, you know, much like many uh, decades later, Mark Twain. Yes. Right? Mark Twain is... Mark Dong. <laughs> yes. Well, what is Mark Twain? Mark Twain, I, I believe, is uh, when you uh, when the when a boat is going, let's say, through the Mississippi, uh, someone has to keep track of where the... Uh, uh, where the where, where the boat could run aground, right? Uh-huh. And so marking the twain is marking where I see. where the ground got where, it, where the it, boat could. Ah, uh, oh, that's why I said mark dong, because that's he had to put his dong. In the, now you get it. Yeah, I believe that's correct. We'll still do your joke. <laughs> Uh, and, 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 uh, it's funnier when we have to explain it. <laughs> uh, so he, so he, uh, he's up in Pittsburgh uh, uh, where his father creates this literary magazine. His father just wanted to write stories of, of people now, in have, the Revolutionary War. Do they have War. hoagies or grinders there? In Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh, it's, it sounds like hoagie area. Should be a hoagie town. Yeah, it seems yeah. like it. But I, who's this so guy? his father did what? His father wrote really, really dry, true stories from the Revolutionary War. Damn. Which, you know, is, you know, is, is only... What, 60, Few years 60, 70 years from there? Or from then? Maybe less? Probably less. Uh, How many crow's feet? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it'd be like 50, right? Yeah, something like if that. It's, oh, no, he's born 1821. He's born in 1821. So, so no, it's, it's like 1840 now. So it's 1840, yeah. So they're we're like... It's 80 seven, years. 60, 70 years, yeah. yeah. Anyway, you guys get it. 150 years. You guys at home, do the math. Uh, and, and so uh, he's, he's back home with his dad, and he's writing... He's doing more comprehensive... He's, he's writing full stories now, and he's writing a lot of stories. You know, his, his, uh, his Navy stories that he's... Uh, hyperbolizing and fantasizing into fictional stories, and he sends them off to right now. Cincinnati is this; it's the West, mm-hmm. and it is, and and it has this lit, lit, literary uh, um, genre of stuff in the West of like stuff that is published in Cincinnati is like this is stories top. from the yeah. from the West, you yeah. know. So anything that's published in Cincinnati is yeah. is 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 nouveau almost, right? right. And they uh, got a river there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, you know, the Paris Paris of the of the West. That, that was Cincinnati. That is so crazy. Cincinnati. Yeah. yeah. It was the Ohio was the western frontier. Yes. And that's weird, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, uh um I think also you, you 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 would have, I mean you know probably a unique perspective on how that would affect the mythology uh, of just you know the unknown. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going into the cave, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that was just the westward expansion, mm-hmm. and so of uh, the tail kept going. The tails had to be taller, right? Yeah. Almost right. Yeah. Uh, Venusian in height, almost. <laughs> yes, because it's kind of I guess a challenge to make more of you, you know, go westward. Right. Yeah. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, there is, you know, this is as far as anybody's gone. Not anybody, but it's as, as far, far as, as the, we've as gone. The, as the white, the white right. man, and or it, the it, American yeah. man. Right. Because God. you know, there, there was there was San already Francisco. people living there. <laughs> like there was, there was already like there was this big great swath of land in the middle that was hitherto before un- unconquered by the white man. Yes. Yeah. Yes. By the by the American. Um, 
Which is all that matters. <laughs> yeah. This uh, history started in 1776. Don't you <laughs> and so he's, he's, he's well received. Uh, his stories in Cincinnati are well received. So he and Severina move uh, to Cincinnati to be closer to the publishers. And, um, and if, you know, so of course, you know, what some success inspires him to just chur- start churning stuff out. But it, at some point, Severina dies, and no one's really sure what happened. Um, he. Odds are he. It, would, it seems like he wasn't there when it happened. Um, there's a, a, a story. There's an anonymous article that's written in a local newspaper, and he would do this often. He would write an article anonymously about himself, send it to a newspaper, and then they would publish it. And there's a story anonymous, anon, like a newspaper's like, oh, here's a story from anonymous. We got to put this out here. Yeah, she died in the best, most beautiful. She died. No, it's, 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 it's not even about her. Uh, about around the time she died, this story. Uh, in in this newspaper says that Ned Buntline uh, was in a nearby, was in a town, uh, maybe I think in Tennessee, and he had heard there was a a reward for capturing some fugitives, and he he wrestled those fugitives up and got $600 for it, and uh, and then, uh, you know, and then, you know, later when he he got back to Cincinnati, he, he found out she had died, and uh, and and he no cause of death or no, I mean back then I don't. She's dead. Yeah, I mean, she was out there on the western frontier, man. Like, she could have been anything. And uh, yeah, it, it briefly, uh, it, you know, briefly uh, uh, stopped his output. And and he wrote to a friend. He said he wrote, uh, "I cannot write now, for my heart is buried in my wife's grave, and I cannot dig it up." And I'm buried uh, in all this cash. You know, even you want like, me to go down there with a lantern? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even for like a 21, 22 year old, you know, that's you know, not bad, not bad, yeah, yeah. not bad. Oh it's yeah, not, 21, 22 for sure. Uh, but then he moves to Nashville and he starts a magazine uh, called Ned Buntline's Own. And this would be something that he would write uh, on and off uh, for almost the rest of his life. Ned Buntline's Own. And uh, it's very popular in town. And it's hyperbolized stories. It's hyperbolized local news. Hearsay. It's rumor. It's stuff I, yeah, it's stuff I heard in town. Gossip. But he's just churning it out. He can write. Uh, 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 you know, later in life, he would say, I think he wrote 650 pages in six days. And this is all handwritten. Jesus. This guy was just, he wrote. <laughs> the what? Frankenstein computer god. Uh, here. <laughs> 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 yes, exactly. Just drivel. <laughs> <laughs> this sailor came out of nowhere and started beating this other sailor's ass. I was there, man. I was in the Navy. <laughs> uh, you know. Anyway, there was a seal. And it turns out it was my dick. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's much better than that, Judd. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> I want you to imagine <laughs> you know, the, my heart is buried in my wife's grave and I, I, and I, and I cannot dick. dig it up. <laughs> and that kind of writing, but about <laughs> stuff that is happening that isn't necessarily dick related. He would later write about dick stuff and we'll get to that. So. That's not a mermaid, you <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> But uh, in in the in a thing that would uh, repeat itself uh, throughout his life, uh, he is in Nashville and uh, he's making some good cash from this uh, nice. from, from this Ned, but- Ned Buntline's own yeah, and he starts walking around town. He's wearing a Spanish cloak and a Panama hat, and it's Christmas uh, eighteen forty five. Like I don't know what it looks like eighteen forty five, and he befriends this beautiful nineteen year old wife Holy of an auctioneer's Holy assistant. Shit. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and he's twenty four. She's 19. Yes. Yeah. yeah. God. And uh, ancient. Her name is Mary Porterfield. And all of a sudden, after after they meet, quickly, rumors are, like rumors around town. She's married. He's not. No. He's got a Panama. He's got a Panama hat and a Spanish cloak. I have a simple Spanish cloak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a Panama hat. Listen, I'm Ned Buntline, <laughs> the gossip zine $10, queen. Ten thousand dollar watch. <laughs> Limos. <laughs> private jets. <laughs> I got private stage coaches. I'm going up and down the Ohio River. I'm fording the Erie Canal. Hey, is this Ric um, Flair? Yeah, <laughs> we're doing Ric Flair. Yeah, but <laughs> Panama Jack hats, Spanish clothes. <laughs> Pinky rings made out of engine bones. R.I.P. Orndorff. Huh? Orndorff is, he was in the Four Horsemen. Orndorff? Orndorff, yeah. Not familiar. He passed away. Well. Bob Orndorff. 
So she, uh, she, she really likes Spanish, and uh, she started re- receiving letters signed El Strangero. <laughs> <laughs> and she couldn't figure out who it was yeah, from. It could have been anybody, really. She's like, I don't speak Spanish. I, I, I actually think it's <laughs> Strangero. <laughs> Strangero. <laughs> El Strangero. <laughs> That is so stupid. That's yeah. really good. El Strangero? Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, uh, Aaron, can you interpret? <laughs> <laughs> it could really mean uh, anything. It's like when you sit on your hand and let it go numb. <laughs> and then you jerk yourself off and it's like an El Strangero is doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. Sir. <laughs> so there's si. there's rumors going on around town that uh, some like some some uh, local kids they say they saw Judson behind the church with a lady, and they threw rocks at him and the lady, and then they were like, hey, I think that's Mary. Uh, Holy shit! And then uh, so all of these uh, these rumors just keep growing and growing and growing to the point where Mary's husband, uh, his brothers and his friends come to him one day and say. You got to kill this guy. Holy shit. And so they they meet come for, to Mary's husband saying yeah. like we, you're yeah. getting cocked by this strange, yeah. This yeah. Span, it's this making Spaniard. us feel bad. Yeah. yeah. Don't you have any self respect? <laughs> kill him. I mean, he'll even fuck your wife with like a rainstorm of stones cascading down on them both. And he loves it. Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> so so uh so Porterfield, Mr. Porterfield, he meets Judson for a duel. And uh, Porterfield shoots three times and misses. Holy shit. Judson shoots once, hits, puts a bullet right above his right eye. Jesus Christ. That Judson, uh, or uh, Edward Judson, crack shot his entire life. Because Fantastic he's shooting shot. all these rascally rabbits. But is he the one writing that he's a crack shot? Or is it? No, well, well, yes and no. I mean, uh, throughout, throughout his life... And there's one very dumb story I'll tell at one point, but, but I shot the bullets out of midair like the motion picture that has yet to be written wanted. <laughs> I was bending bullets around the children and my sexual consort, Mary, around corners, hitting the bullets before he even had a chance to get a crack shot on him. He, he, he would do things, uh, uh, people would, would testify, or not testify, but they would tell a story. You know, he'd be riding a horse. He would tie a, a, a bottle to, uh, to a tree, uh, hanging from a tree. And riding a horse, he would shoot the rope of the bottle uh, wow. from the horse. Damn. Crack shot. Pew. So anyway, this guy shoots three times, misses one bullet right above the eye. Uh, of course, he doesn't die. Well, he doesn't die immediately, but he does die. Jesus Christ in Bullets heaven. were so bad back then. You know? oh, oh, yeah. yeah. No one knew what the fuck they were doing. They are made out of like, you know. T- crumpled up aluminum foil. Yeah, but, they, but then the doctors would be like, oh, I got to get in there. And they just take their oh, yeah, hand yeah. and just shove it into their brain and be like, I got the bullet. <laughs> we'll figure it out now. I just, I just finished giving birth to a calf. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Sinew, placenta, <laughs> shit all over the place. Yeah. What blood? Like, you got blood? The, Let me pull this the cow is blood? I guess they can mix. Uh, and uh, so the public, the, the public in, in Nashville, they call for his death. Uh, and Ned? Yeah. Because he killed It's a this? duel, though. I mean, but, the, guy, but, the tribe but, is the, but the duel started because Ned was uh, th- th- possibly fucking this guy's wife. Well, That's, then what's the point of the duel unless it settles the matter? Well, it's trial I, by combat. This is not... We're, we're not talking about logical people here. <laughs> we're talking about the honky-tonk <laughs> town of Nashville. <laughs> this is before country music, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's how they that's how they sell stuff now. Jack White, yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Jack White has no problem with people at at all, except for Dan Auerbach for some reason. (laughs) Yeah, well, he's got a Panama hat and a Spanish cloak, and that's enough for me to want to kill him. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) The end. Yeah, I guess he's an outsider too. There's a lot of things. Anyway, so uh, uh, as, as someone. As someone writes in the paper, they they about uh, while they're calling for uh, uh, Judson's. At least, you know, arrest. They write uh, about Porterfield. They write, first stricken to the heart by his wife's dishonor and then shot through the head by the author of The Destroyer of His Happiness. And what an author he was. (laughs) Signed Anonymous. (laughs) It's a wonder how the three shots never hit his hog. (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, the mere gravity alone would you would imagine that the gravity of the goddamn thing would attract the bullets to it. I heard it was lowered into a gamma mine, <laughs> and that's why it's so girthy. Yeah, and the fact that his father beat him <laughs> made him an angry son of a bitch, and you wouldn't like. It when it's angry. <laughs> it hasn't decided its gender yet, although it is a phallus. Signed and not. And we Truly all- yours, <laughs> El Stranger. <laughs> El Stranger O'Holco. <laughs> Davido Bannero. <laughs> so uh, Judson's arrested and he's put on trial. And the first day of this trial, Porterfield's brother breaks into the courtroom. You fucking motherfucker. And shoots at Judson. uh, Misses. And in the ruckus of uh, this whole thing, Judson runs out of the building. And this brother gives chase. And he's shooting at him the entire time. Judson runs into a hotel. Gets up to the top floor. He's still followed there. Tries to race down from the top floor by t- by riding the banister, sliding down the banister, falls off the banister, breaks his leg. Oh God! The sheriff shows up and stops the brother from huh. killing him. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's arrested again. This time with a broken leg. They put him in jail. Shit. Then the brother and a posse break into the jail. Get him. Oh my God. And they they uh, they 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 put a noose around his neck and they go to hang him. But someone does something. They either but he's he's already hung. They either cut the yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now. What I did was, was I bounced the bullets off the bars and shot the rope out. <laughs> Only way we can suck came is with his own hog, sir. Sir, <laughs> his penis is being used as a splint to fix his tibia. You can't hang a guy when, he, when his the, the dick is still holding him up. <laughs> <laughs> They've used the bed sheets to fashion a rudimentary. Went around his broken leg. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not gonna be able to hang him with it, sir. Do you have any advice? Even with a workable softie, this guy can stay off the ground, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, either someone, either someone cut him down, or they cut the rope before they uh, they went to hang him. But either way, he he the the rope breaks and he falls, and he's then brought he's arrested again. But at this point. His case is just like quietly shoved aside. And in the middle of the night, they let him flee the town. Fuck out of here. Come on. So he stops in Philadelphia and New York and he starts on his way back to New York, his way to New York. And he meets, he's like runs into famous writers and he's, uh, he's, uh, uh, he, like he, he, he went there. He went from Tennessee to the coast, the East coast, and then rented a boat and would ride it into towns and he would enter the towns and go to the bar and say, Gentlemen, I am Buntline. If anybody wants to see me particularly, why well, you may just say I'm here. And that was, he would just do that in towns he stopped at. Would anybody see him? I guess so. I mean, this is the tale <laughs> of Captain Ned Buntline. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sup, motherfuckers, I'm here. The popper of Cincinnati. <laughs> if anybody has anything to say to me. Well, well I'm, here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. But but you know, he, don't be a stranger. He he, oh. would, he was he was my, you know his name was like you know a little bit known. Uh, and his all, name rang out. And other authors did know him, and, and he did have dinner with some of, of the other famous the famous authors of the time, and he learned from them kind of. Uh, about uh, uh, you know uh, uh, hyperbolizing <laughs> stories yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, and public and, relations was really <laughs> and yeah he was constantly he was constantly seeing throughout his life for the most part seeing what are popular writers doing mm. okay I right. should do that right and so uh, <laughs> turning out content <laughs> yeah <laughs> porno uh, eventually uh, um, he he settles in Boston. Uh, where he starts a publishing company and he sells his books specifically to soldiers, mm. so to take on their trips to to Mexico because they're they're going to Mexico to fight now, um, and you know because he was a soldier and he's like okay well you know there's plenty of time sure uh, so he 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 he's right he one of his books he writes is uh, the King of the Sea a tale of the fearless and free and this would be reprinted. Uh, for decades, continuously for decades, and even it was pirated in England. It was such a popular Holy dime shit. novel type of book. Oh, really? Mm. And uh, you know, you know, but it, you know, small enough to fit in a pocket, so a soldier could take it. Somewhere. Sure. 
It was a, kind it was of a, a Tijuana yeah. Bible. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a comic book. Basically. I mean, ba- basically, yeah, yeah with, 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 without drawings, yeah. Right. Uh, and, but you know and, what I mean, like just like the pulpy, yeah, pulpy you know, yeah, it was yeah. melodramatic and violent. Yeah, and, catered and, to a and certain people audience who, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a real, uh, I don't know if it's an art or a science. Science maybe is working with Mercury, mm-hmm. but to, you know, you just know because you've been there, you know what the content people want is. Sure. And yeah, like, and, and there's the stuff that's like you know the street stuff, and mm-hmm. it, it's not. Dickens, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's something you all want because it's part of the uh, reason that Iceberg Slim was so popular. Yeah, it's you yeah. Know, everybody yeah. wants Speaking to see the language. everybody wants to see yeah Total Recall. It's garbage, but it's good. Yeah, <laughs> Total Recall or Ephraim. What do you think about like mindless entertainment? You know, back then the books were the mindless entertainment. Yes, yeah. you know, totally. It yes. was. You could just read a thing without having to think twice about yeah, it. Yeah, it's garbage. Like yeah. Ma- Mary Higgins Clark. You know, you know who you know who the the protagonist is. You know who the antagonist yeah. is. Yeah, uh, you're rooting for something. Fabio on fun, the cover, and is you know someone's writing interesting violence. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, and he's got a Spanish coat and a yeah. Panama hat. <laughs> well, he, he wasn't wearing it as as far as I know. He wasn't wearing. Well, he stopped he wearing it after did. Nashville. Uh, but uh, but he one of the books he wrote around this time uh, in the same pirate style was The Black Avenger of the Spanish Main. And this was a book that was mentioned it's that, very that, that to Tom, Tom Sawyer loved. Really? Yes, because Mark, Mark Twain... And you're saying this was like bootleg level? What do you mean? Like, was it Ned Buntline? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, I mean, like the, it wasn't the, like the, name the, on the, the cover? Black, the Black Avenger of the Spanish Main, a Ned Buntline special. Okay. Uh, it, a really well-selling book. And, you know, it, it and in the culture enough... That you know, Mark Twain imagines Tom Sawyer liking it, right? Uh, you know, Tom, you know, so so it. I mean, that's kind of one of the keys to Buntline's success was that he was able to write books for people who wanted to read books, but people weren't writing books for them, and which is yes. like poor people. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Very good. Very. Uh, his next book was kind of his breakthrough book. Uh, he he moved back to New York City and he wrote a book called the mysteries and many uh, mis- the mysteries and many uh, the mysteries and miseries of New York a story mm-hmm. of real life. Uh, Julie Brigham calls it a melodramatic hyperbole, and it was likely patterned off this uh, French no- novel titled The Mysteries of Paris. Uh-huh. Uh huh. His- Cincinnati of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Judson's book. <laughs> 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 we like to think of ourselves a bit like the season of the Ohio of Europe. But Jud- Judson's book sold 100,000 copies. Hey. Jesus Christ. And countless more pirated. Yeah. Yeah. 100,000 in and, and, that and, time. And what it, what it was was a collection of stories based on truth of paupers and princes and prostitutes in New York the grotesque and the beautiful and the and and the grand and the and the garish. Sure, and, you know, and it was like uh, bum fights. It was <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding. it was just not kidding. like bum <laughs> fights. It was like girls gone wild. <laughs> no, <laughs> am I wrong? Yes. yes. Oh, cool. Absolutely. <laughs> nice. But, no, but, but it's, it's so it's 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 but heightened it, reality. Heightened reality. Oh, right. Yes. But uh, but uh, focused on a street level. Uh, something, yes. Something poor people can identify with. Other poor people, yes, but, 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 but not it, Tale of Two Cities, Dickens. No, yes. no, 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 no. It's no. it's not high drama. Yeah, right. It's it's it's, it's low stakes, but it's low people, high stakes. Yeah, right. Uh, yes, uh, that's fun. Yeah, that's and fun. like you know, you know, the, the thing I, I I always think of is like no one ever talks about the janitors in Star Wars. I don't care about Jedi's. I want to know what right. the fucking janitors do. They have to clean up the fucking blood all over the place. Yeah, what all like, the various species and the various types of uh, the species feces. Yeah, yes. Like I mean, you got to have a multitude of toilets, myriad toilets. Myriad. Oh, that's true. No I one mean, ever talks. What you're are like, the bathrooms in the Star Wars universe? No one ever talks I about mean, that. I mean, you have to imagine the the plumbing and Coruscant the planet oh, that's they basically the, say. I mean, really, a feat of engineering maybe rivaling the Death Star. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, on the Death Star, at least they're all kind of humo- humanoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coruscant, you add all sides to the aliens yeah. and lizard people. Yeah, and maybe, 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 maybe it's, maybe and, it's and, hard and, feces. And you, maybe it's soft. I mean, what is it? Maybe I mean, it's newspaper. You can't throw it out into the cold vacuum of space. Are they gender space. bathrooms? No. It'll freeze. No, there's are no they, gender. gender. Is, there, is there gender? I mean, how many gender? How many sexes does you oh. know? The, uh, the, well, this is a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But they already knew that gender was gay. You rapping? Rapping for each individual species. <laughs> huh? For each individual species, there's uh, got to be a multitude. I don't see see. Sp- I don't see species. That's a good movie. Species? <laughs> I Natasha just, Hanstridge? I smell feces. <laughs> <laughs> In space, nobody can smell your fart. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, around, so around this time where he, sell, he, he has this book, uh, uh, The Mysteries and, and Miseries in New York, he uh, it sells 100,000 copies. He marries a uh, 19-year-old, uh, an Annie, Annie Bennett. Uh, she's an English woman living in New York City with her rich family. Uh-oh. And uh, he immediately moves into their house and <laughs> starts writing again, starts again writing his Ned Buntline's own series. Putting his feet up on the table, yeah. picking his toenails. Uh, pr- pretty much. <laughs> and so in Isn't these, it great to be with family? <laughs> in, in these installments of Ned Buntline's own, which immediately... Are, are selling like hotcakes, mm-hmm. uh, especially back then because people ate hotcakes. I do my own editorials. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was before Jimmy Breslin. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of like he's he's he, he's still doing the thing where he's telling stories in New York, but also he's using his own oh, publication. No, that, that shit starts there. That, yeah. sh- that shit starts with like yeah. the, the colorful personality and the guy that's seen it exactly. all. And, you know, talking to the guys at the deli every day, like all that type of shit starts with like the neighborhood guy. But, but that's he, an old New Yorker. He's also doing it at this other level where he spends a lot of time haranguing prostitutes that he dislikes. And anyone he anyone he dislikes, he's head thre- is bad. He threatens to blackmail them in this paper. If he, if he ever meets someone and doesn't like him, he threatens to blackmail them in his newspaper. Oh, he's like Al Goldstein. And usually he's blackmailing them about the prostitutes they visit because he saw them when he was yes, s- yes, yes, yes. prostitutes. And he visited so many prostitutes, and that's probably why he was so upset with them. He just constantly had feuds with all these people. He would attack rival papers, he would he would attack anybody who stopped subscribing to to his paper? <laughs> <laughs> Would he attack them in his paper? <laughs> well, and then for you, good, you're not even reading this, you mm-hmm. fucking yeah, piece of he shit. Would, he would, and then for good measure, there'd be cartoons of him stabbing them. <laughs> <laughs> but to cover to cover himself for good measure, he would att- he would send anonymous articles to his own paper attacking himself. Oh, that's good, man. His <laughs> cock's just too big, man. <laughs> I mean, what's the deal with that? Taking up all the good sunlight. <laughs> I'll tell you something, man. My my plan. Are dying, they're not getting enough sun. <laughs> this city is miserable and mysterious. <laughs> Check out my book, it's uh, Mysteries I mean, I mean, and Miseries. Yeah, that's real nice. And even though his book, The Black Avenger of the Spanish Main, is a literary masterpiece, this guy's dick mm-hmm. is too big. <laughs> He's clogging up all the toilets with his spunk and send you. Jesus. I hate him so much. <laughs> Sincerely yours, Jesus. Anonymous. And send you? <laughs> Damn it! What? Sin you, Spunk the Spunk of the West. Sin you, <laughs> what? Some of the worst things that ever happened on this show. <laughs> That's a high bar, too. It's visceral. <laughs> so, so at this point, because of all of the attacks in his newspaper against him, and in other, uh, but also rival newspapers are also attacking him. He starts wearing disguises when he leaves the house. <laughs> and wigs. And wigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is stupid. And, uh, it, <laughs> and he, he's just, he's, you know, he's just like a, he's a troublemaker. And at, at, at one point... I'm a rascal in a wig, man. Yeah. He's like the kind of guy that's wearing a disguise to get noticed. Wait, there's, there's oh, a story. There, 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 don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing so- You know who I hate is that Ned Buttline. <laughs> Br- 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 Brickland like has this very short anecdote where, <laughs> oh, at one point he goes out with a red mustache, and the next day, a, a rival newspaper is like, "This some guy in a red mustache was causing all these problems." <laughs> <laughs> In a Ned Buntline fashion. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Ned Buntline fashion, Panama hats and Spanish coats half off. <laughs> Welcome to the Buntline Neditorial. <laughs> there is some rapscallion out there with a red mustache up to all types of shit. 
<laughs> this guy's a real pain in the balls. <laughs> Plus, I got a New York accent now. <laughs> Cincinnati, you're on the page. <laughs> Cincinnati, you're Paris. <laughs> Cincinnati, you're Paris. <laughs> can we take a break real quick? I have to pee. Yes, we can, Jen. I overshared. No, it's okay. Uh, when we come back, I, I, when we come back, I'll tell, I'll tell the story of, uh, of him getting beat up by a prostitute. That's nice. Oh, Look forward to that. Did he have to pay? You'll find yeah, out. Yeah, hell yeah, he paid. You gotta pay good money. You gotta pay the fiddler. And the diddler. And the room. And we're back. Hey, hi. Uh, I, uh, oh, oh uh, you wanna... Uh, Twitter, Instagram... Oh, yes, we are the PP Podcast on Twitter. We are Profiles in Eccentricity on Instagram. We do have a Patreon. We do an extra episode per week. And you can join for as little as $5 a month and support these poor PP boys. <coughs> and uh, it's we have a lot of fun. The, the, last time the MK Ultras don't pay for themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. The last time, last time we had a, a real good time with television... <laughs> That was that was nice. That was. We talked about sick. I episode. love television. We were talking about the Loki finale, and we were talking about uh, how we got into defending. Mm. Uh, might it be uh, Roseanne? <laughs> oh, that's right. No, I'm not Matt. Uh, okay, but might very it, nice. Might it? Might it? Might it? Uh, so, uh, might it? Might also, uh, might wait, it did you Roseanne? do the Instagram? I did say okay. The Instagram. Yeah, we're also on Pinterest. No. no. Oh, we do have the T-shirts though. We do have the t-shirts on Lots Etsy. Of cool shirts. On, Etsy. on Etsy, you can get uh, uh, the Hard Pipe Hitters Union, uh, the Men Singer Crew. We're pretty fucking far from okay. Pretty far from okay. Uh, and uh, I forget the teak. Do you? Mm-hmm. Uh, we got the Ramones logo from ye old uh, uh, Steel Reserve from the first media episode. Did you ever listen to that? Please. Uh, piss, it's number one. Uh, piss, it's number one. Um, there's... You know, just uh, show off that you're into a really smart, Dumb. stupid yeah. as hell podcast, and you know, wear our shit. We're kind of like the podcast that Ned would have done. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's dumb and smart. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really for special people. Well, I would say, Matt, you might disagree. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. I think back then it was. I'm really, trying to push the show, man. No, I know, but I think it's it's all about tall tales, really. Yes, yeah, the tales he told were not uh, desperate. They were based on truth, and then but that was became almost, not truth. That was kind of like more kind of like this. More, <laughs> more. I think we get into some real shit here. We do get into some real shit. But I think about back then there was a thing about like myth making was more important than actual journalism in a certain way. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, we, we should save it for later, but I think today it's too easy to fact check. <laughs> and I don't, also, mean, I don't mean too also, easy in a bad way. I yeah. just, just right, that. right, right. But also, at the same time, tons of misinformation. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. I know. It's disinformation kind of, kind is bigger of, than it's ever. It's kind of amazing yeah. in that sense. Disinformation uh, right here? I, I, well, I want to fix uh, one piece of uh, misinformation. Uh, Mark Twain means Mark number two. It's a Mississippi River term. Ah. The second mark on the line uh, that measured depth signified two fathoms uh, or 12 feet, right. which was a safe, safe depth for a steamboat. I see. Right, like when they say never the Twain shall meet, that means two. That means no no Mark Twains mm-hmm. can meet another Mark Twain. Right, because then the time-space continuum will right. collapse in on itself. It could yes. be bad. In the most catastrophic ideal. fashions. So... Where were we? Ned Buntline, he gets in a drunken brawl with a man one night. Oh, uh, you don't say. And you're on my way off. Notori- notorious, uh, notorious drunk Ned Buntline. And we'll, 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 we'll talk about that a little bit uh, more later. Or just become more relevant later. But uh, he gets in a drunken fight with a man. He then, uh, using his Ned Buntline's own uh, uh, newspaper, he then attacks the man in his newspaper saying... You know how ugly this man is? You want to know how ugly this man is? How ugly? Look how ugly the the prostitutes he sleeps with are. Wow. And then he lists off the <laughs> house of prostitution that he went to. Artist rendering by anonymous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he lists off the house. And so one day he's walking th- through New York and that the the woman who ran that house sees him and she clubs him in the head. And uh 
Was that with her hooves? Or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, then, then she, then she runs off, and uh, he has They're her. Pigs? What? He has her arrested. Oh my god! Really? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, at the end of the day, the man's gonna run like these. If can't he, be clubbing me on that bunt line. Yeah, like he might not. He's not gonna duel that lady, but he'll he'll make sure she answers for that. And, oh boy, and how? And uh, uh, and at her trial, she insi- she she says that the Judson deserved to be hit, and she produces the two letters uh, that he sent her, or one and another random letter that she got uh, <laughs> after after El after, stranger after she hit after she hit him, and before her trial, she receives two letters. One Twain letter. One is signed by Judson, and it includes this paragraph: "You are an infernal, dirty bitch, and if you ever <laughs> attempt to do to me a similar act, you may consider yourself shot. Take warning by this, dirty whore. My paper is mine, and I am able to be, be responsible for any articles contained within." E C Z E C Z E Z C Judson. And the second one was signed, "One who knows something, but it was in his handwriting." <laughs> And it, he and in that one, she was called a damned whore who is fucked every night by sporting men. Woe to be, woe to be you, cursed whore! Look out! Wow. Heads up, bitch. Uh, and very, I'm getting crazy iceberg slim vibes. And I love it. <laughs> this guy's a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you scurvy bitch! You ain't worth half a dime back. You nasty pig woman. <laughs> Sincerely yours, the coolest of the cool. <laughs> Ice. Uh, so, uh, but you know, so his paper and uh, like the trial probably only helped his sales. His paper is selling out every week, and it's not even just selling out in New York. It's selling out in Philadelphia. It's selling out in even Harrisburg. Everybody is familiar with how popular Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, is. It's selling out in all kinds of cities on the on the East Coast. Yeah, and. This I, pap- I do know Harrisburg. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the capital of Pennsylvania, and no one cares. Uh, it's it's one of those things that you make a capital because you're like, maybe people care about this place. It's like Sacramento in California. <laughs> nice. Why would they care about it if it wasn't a capital? <laughs> not, much, uh, not much going on here. It's like Juneau in Alaska. Good uh, place to put a capital. Nobody will come fuck with it. <laughs> uh, the, the, Ned Buntline's own is making him $1,000 a month. That's about $35,000 today. So just from this paper, he is making... Yeah, four four hundred twenty thousand dollars a year today. Is that because of the personal scandal or because of the tall tales told within? Uh, both. I mean, so it's what, like I mean, this what, guy's what, down with hookers. Plus, he's got some stories about navy shit. Did he ever make yeah. a salad dressing? Ned Buntline's own. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> they, don't, no, they didn't make salad dressings back then. I don't. I'm think. sorry. What? <laughs> it's, what it's, we it's have is cabbage ketchup. Does anyone know uh, the, <laughs> when they when they started making salad dressing? When they, yeah. Oh, as soon as salad was invented. When was salad invented, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Who yeah, invented that's a, salad, that's a very Aaron? Good question. Sal. Jimmy Salad. Oh, okay. <laughs> My Italian fella. Don't say Caesar. <laughs> Sal. Uh, it, well, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a couple things. It's, it's scandalous stories, but it's also good writing. Right. And you, you combine those with then you add on top of that this guy is a shit. Right. Well, and New York City, especially at that time. All these places, like, there's such a layer of filth uh, in, in so many places mm-hmm. that, again, this is a guy that if you're a rich person, you can be like, oh, oh that's interesting. But if you're, if you're not a rich person, you can be like, this guy's telling stories about people I know. Yes. Because I see them every day. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, like I was saying about the Breslin thing and... You know that tell, kind of tell, explain what you mean by Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy, explain well, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Breslin, Jimmy Breslin is, is is a guy that was you know this old crop of uh, the city uh, columnist that would kind of that you know so, uh, you know say like you know his opinion on what was going on with people and stuff, and then you know they're frequently talking. Was about, it the Post? I think he was Post. Yes, um, New York Post. Yeah, New York Post pre uh, Murdoch. Yes, uh, he was yes. there for a long time, and then the uh, son of Sam was writing letters to him specifically. Yeah, um, but there is, you know, th- these guys, you know, the kind of trusted. He's working the local beat. Columnist was like a thing. The the, uh, the official gossip. 
I mean, and, and, and almost and, like the and, tribal and, elder, but but, but in, not in a certain like, way, not like gossip like we might know today, like celebrity gossip. It's it's, it's a local, the, yeah, it's me, a, yeah, the noun gossip. Yes, yes. Well, uh, and it was, but there was a thing too about like, okay, well, listen, we're all New Yorkers, we're all tough, yeah, mm-hmm. but I'm not going anywhere. But here's what I think is wrong with this city, and, like, <laughs> yes, and yes, then yes, they kind yes. they have they start yeah. there, right? Um, and in the pantheon of that. You also get this thing of, you know, that is how somebody like Donald Trump would get thrown around as a character mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Right. And people would be like, oh, well, he's a jerk off. And people are like, yeah. all right, well, he's kind of funny, though. You know what I mean? And it, right. it builds up this thing. And it's like, oh, well, he's, he's all showy and he's talking about how rich he is, but not really much going on there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and then they're like, he's a jerk off. And it's like, yeah, well, he says he's not. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, then, and then it becomes, that's how you. Right. He kind of became this, like, well, I'm getting, um, uh, um, uh, Ned, and it was kind of like a, the Perez Hilton. But in the early 2000s of like shit rag. I mean, and, yeah, and, but funny writing, but like, a yeah, but it, it, it is, it is, but, you're, you're, you're going I'm somewhere. I'm kind of getting. Yeah, you're getting there. It, it's, it's, it's almost a reality TV level. Yeah. Like, uh, there was also a, back in the day, there was a website called WWT DD. What would Tyler Durden do? Mm. And it was this kind of like gossipy, cunty, funny Yes. Blog poet. Yeah. And you would go see kind of like uh, goings on around town that were really shitty. Yeah. Right. But very funny and speaking the language of the day. Yeah. And that's kind of, yeah, that's, that's more. Yeah. That's, that's, that's uh, it. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, the, and then guys like Perez Hilton eventually did get bigger than their own thing and had their own problem, you know, like mm-hmm. kind of outgrew his own thing. I'm kind of yeah. getting those vibes yeah, yeah. i mean it, it's interesting i guess uh, you know keep that thought because i don't know if that is necessarily what happens but we I, haven't I, gotten I, to the crazy I, stuff i, I, yeah. th- I think it, I, but i think that's a you know interesting um uh, um, uh, uh not necessarily pigeonholing but the uh, idea so i'm making a connection yeah and, and, and so so his paper's doing well but he's still writing books too he's still writing these like you know these these short novel stories and at around this time, 1848, 1849, any bookseller in America at that time, his books are a half or a third of their inventory. What? Yeah. Good God almighty. It, it, I mean, there's not as many, like, today there's, there's, books. today there's a glut of authors, right? I mean, but, you know, back then, there weren't as many authors, there weren't, and there was, wasn't anybody else I, that I know of. That didn't write in crayon. That that that, yeah, <laughs> that wrote as much as he did. Yeah, you know he he's doing Ned Buntline's own. That's the paper, but he's still writing these stories and these novels and these serials nonstop. Yeah, and he would do things like he would sign a contract with, and this would be later in life, but he would sign a contract with someone. And they'd be like, okay, uh, uh, you Ned Buntline can't write for anybody else. And then he would just write under different names <laughs> because he's like, cause fuck that. He's going to, he's going to write all of his stories and it'll just be so-and-so mm-hmm. sure is now here's no, here's a book by so-and-so. And the thing is about that, that is sellable is if, if, if this is the guy that's, you know, half the inventory, it would make sense for other people to ape him. So yes. then it makes Absolutely. sense if he's doing it under pen names mm-hmm. that it sounds bunt line-esque. Yeah. Right. Because and so people are just, it's it. just a, very, uh, a bad ex- you know, excuse for a bun line ripoff. Yeah, it's, it's actually yes. Him. I mean, the, some of the yeah. apes are him. It's the Richard. He's Bopper. aping himself. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's an Arbala. <laughs> That's uh, right. So Sound speed. So with sure all of this, it. with all of this, like well, all of these sales, he has is getting a cultural cachet, and he takes this influence, and you know, in, in Ned Buntline's own, he had published a lot of anti-immigrant stances. And so he combines that with his influence and he basically becomes the megaphone for the know nothing party in America. Holy shit. And we talked about that a little bit Mm -hmm. uh, on a Patreon episode um, about uh, this uh, priest from Maine and the, the, the know nothing apart, know nothing party would later uh, also be branded as the American party, but it was an anti-immigrant party. It was a, it was um, America first party type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, the, the one, Gang and From gangs, here all gangs, the gangs way to the edge of Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, America. 
in, in many cases, he was credited as the creator of the Know Nothing Party. That's how much influence he had. But actually, he, there's no evidence he was even at the first convention of the of the Know Nothing Party. Uh, but he was the first celebrity of the Know Nothing Party and probably their biggest ever hmm. uh, speaker and draw. Damn. And so he combines these things with a specific moment in time in New York. On May 10th, 1849, Shakespeare's Macbeth was going to be performed at the Astor Place Opera House in New York. At that time in America, there are two actors known far and wide for playing Macbeth. One was a Britishman named William Charles McCready. Britishman. And a lot of flourish, right? Yes. The other was an American named Edwin Forrest. Now... McCready and Forrest had uh, kind of a, 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 I don't even know if it was a back and forth. I do know that McCready did not like Forrest and would snipe at him through the papers. Uh, they had different styles, but one was American, one was British. And even, I think it was Grover, Grover Cleveland might have been president. <sighs> whoever, was, whoever was president around this time had run on an, an anti-British platform. Sure. And... There was, you know, part of the Know Nothing Party wasn't, you know, it, it's kind of weird to think about it today to be like American anti-British. But back then, the British were the immigrants. Huh. And so there was a, the Know Nothing Party was anti-Irish, anti-immigrants, and it was, yeah. even though it's like, they're, they're, what the fuck is they're American? Immig- they're immigrants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't assholes. from around here. So now Judson has been in his in his Ned Buntline th- zone. He's been fomenting these anti immigrant, anti aristocrat messages for a while, and British aristocrat, of course, right? And so the night before the performance, he posts these bills all over town, and and they say it, the title is "Working Men," and then it says, "Shall Americans or English rule in this city?" The crew of the British steamer have threatened all Americans who share, shall dare to express their opinions this night at the English Aristocratic Opera House. There's an exclamation point after every word. We advocate no violence but a free expression of opinion to all public men, working men, free men. Stand by your lawful rights. Signed, the American Committee. And these were all written by Buntline. And through as they got closer and closer to this performance, he was fomenting... This, we should fuck this place up. Peacefully. <laughs> With love. <laughs> so the show is sold out at the Astor, Astor, Astor Place uh, uh, Opera House. Outside the Opera House, 10,000 people show up. Holy shit. And in the midst of it... Fuck Macbeth, man. Everyone knows 12 Nights better. Because, because the, the British MacReady is going to perform. Yes. And... In the midst of these 10,000 people walks Judson. In his coat, he has two pistols. Jesus Christ. He originally had one pistol and a knife, but his brother-in-law uh, was like, don't... Can I borrow that knife? No, his brother-in-law was like, <laughs> you're probably going to get arrested. That's my family's knife. I'll give you your gun back if you give me the knife. Hell yeah. And he walks into the crowd and he yells, are there any Americans here? I am Ned Buntline. You're going to want a nucleus to this party. He then tells the crowd to start a fire. Nucleus, man. You got to. He used nucleus. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. As a verb. Yes. What what, what does that mean? Well, Well, a nucleus is the center of something, right? So that's what I mean. It's a very strange use of the word. That's what I'm saying. So what what, what does he mean? You're going to want a leader. Someone has to. Someone has to take charge. So of, basically, get center around me. Mm-hmm. You see, you're going to want a nucleus to this party, yes. or you want two nucleus. You're going to want a nucleus to this uh, party, right? I, now that I can make some. And, and so the word starts going through the crowd. Oh, Ned Buntline! This mm-hmm. Ned Buntline. I'm Ned an Buntline, electron. Ned Buntline. I'm a proton. <laughs> and uh, and there's there's like there's tons of like kids there because they have nothing to do. And, and children should not be around nuclear energy. He, um, he, he tells the crowd to start a fire behind the theater. So that way everybody has to run out the front doors and they can all like heckle and harass. Them. Okay, y'all. But We're then 300 this shit. Well, th- so a, a group goes to try to start a fire behind the theater. 
and it doesn't quite work. But as this is happening, Buntline gets a group of young men and kids to start throwing stones through the windows of the theater. Holy shit. Someone throws a, a giant stone that smashes an entire window out, and the crowd just starts streaming in. Meanwhile, in the theater, they also had people <laughs> placed in the crowd to start heckling when McCready got on stage. So they had people in the audience to, to cause a problem. And then someone tried to start a fire underneath the stage. Oh, my God. Dude, this and, is fucking bananas. And, and also, everybody knew something was going to... The police were already there. The firemen were already there. Yeah. <laughs> Bunt lines up to something tonight, man. It's going <laughs> yeah, to be pretty, pretty much <laughs> sick. I can't believe this British dude's doing this, man. Because it's not about money. It's about sending a message. That's right. true. Yeah. And it's not about Macbeth. It's about Big Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> Call it Big Macbeth. Yeah, you know, you could have it your way. <laughs> and, and so the, as the crowd starts streaming in, Judson is arrested by police. And as he's he's arrested for inciting... didn't do anything! He's arrested for inciting a riot, but as he's arrested, he has a paving stone over his head, ready to throw it into the theater. What? What? I just found this. I'm working I'm, out! I'm putting it back. <laughs> what are we even doing? <laughs> <laughs> Holding stones of our head, like Atlas. Can I, I shrug? Why do we can punish... I, can I why shrug? do we punish the American worker? <laughs> So Amer the last letters of American are I can. Yeah. Well, can I? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> so Bunlines are he's arrested, but that doesn't arrested. stop what is happening that night. The the troops show up. The troops? Uh, 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 American said, troops. They show up. The I, Army? I don't I don't know if they had a national guard then, but like the local troops the local from a garrison, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. They show up Gendarme. and they face off with the crowd of, of rioters. And the first thing they do is they shoot blanks over their heads. And everybody goes, all the rioters go, oh, those are blanks. So then, then they charge them. And so then the soldiers start shooting Bullets. live ammunition at them. We were wrong. <laughs> we were wrong. And, and, and they don't always fire. Like, they're not just firing into the crowd. They're firing over the crowd. They're just like, we have real ammunition. And so they, but they fire wildly. And they just hit random people. Uh, this is from, uh, from Brinklin. <laughs> One lead bull struck Mrs. Brennan, a housekeeper, in both thighs while she was passing through the Bowery on her way home from work. She Jesus! Was <laughs> she was sick. Hard to miss. <laughs> Student Stephen Kudo, uh, 24, was shot in the eye, and the ball lodged permanently in his neck. In the eye, and it lodged in his neck? Yeah. What, was he fucking flying at him like Raiden? <laughs> <laughs> James Stewart was stepping from a carriage on 5th Avenue near A Street, was hit by a lead ball in the neck, and nicked his jugular vein, and he died within minutes. <laughs> oh, shit. Timothy Aylwood, 19, was shot through the thigh, which fractured the bone. He later died from shock when a leg had to be amputated. <laughs> <laughs> Some bullets claimed victims more than two blocks away. Some other people were hit while minding their own business in their homes. <laughs> Phillies wanted... Ah! <laughs> Did you read the new butt line report? <laughs> <laughs> ah! Man, I really love his his funny little tales, but you know, I really can't stand the anti-immigrant. <laughs> you, know, you know what I enjoy is his antics and how he gets people riled up. Man, he's such a troll, you know? You know? It's so great to really <laughs> re revel in the, the, the victimist crime that he can... Oh, fuck. Oh, Christ. <laughs> this is in no way going to come back to my... Yeah, this is no way like January 6th. Oh, God. <laughs> so, uh... Later, a publisher would compile eyewitness reports, and 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 one of them, uh, one of them writes uh, that uh, here and there around the building and at the corners of the streets were crowds of men talking in deep and earnest tones of indignation. There were little processions moving off with the dead or mutilated bodies of their friends and relatives. A husband uttering frenzied curses follows mortally wounded wife to the hospital. An aged mother mother found her only son, the sole support of her declining years, in the agonies of death. Many a wife sat watching at home in terror and alarm for her absent husband. It was an evening of dread, and it became a night of horror, which on the morrow, when the awful tragedy became more widely known, settled down upon the city like a funeral pall. Oof. Uh, at least 22 people had died, and uh, 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 maybe 30, 31 people uh, couldn't be accounted for. 
And the critics declared Macbeth is a hit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this show is nuts. <laughs> it's I mean, got everything. <laughs> McCready really brings it. They really break the fourth wall. They break the windows, too. Actually, they break it all down. It's an interactive experience. <laughs> it's his 4DX. <laughs> I mean, I came up with people's pieces of glass in my life. I wasn't even laying in <laughs> I got spots all over the place. I I didn't even go to the play and I was a part of it. It's performed in DMX. And all the world is a stage, isn't it? Damn, that's wild. So So the next day, is he public enemy number one? Well, now that he's arrested too? I mean, kind of. So he's arrested and uh, like friends pay for his bail. And his father-in-law, this rich man, uh, wouldn't pay for his bail. And so then he... Writes terrible things about him in his, God, in his newspaper. His <laughs> father-in-law, what despite a child. despite yes. despite his daughter being a smoking hot piece of ass. <laughs> well, the time this dude, <laughs> uh, I'm the master of the muffin. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this dude sucks. And the only good thing he did was knock up my wife's mom. Wouldn't even bust me out of jail for inciting a riot. I mean, who does he think he is? <laughs> I think, you know, I think it was probably that dude with that red mustache that did all this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where was that guy? Uh, so, so uh, <laughs> never saw a red mustache guy and my father-in-law in the same room together. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm just asking questions. I'm just, just, just asking. I'm just, all I'm doing is questions. asking questions. That's what. I, listen, I, I'm bringing back the wig party. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my own research and wigs. <laughs> so, uh, so he's he uh, is then. Uh, He's arrested and he, he makes bail. Like all, he always has sus- supporters to pay for his bail uh, usually. And uh, but then he he was brought to trial. He's found guilty. Uh, his wife divorces him. He spends a year in Blackwell Island Prison on Roosevelt Island in New York. Shit. But when he's uh, and, and he just, what's he, it called? Bl- uh, Blackwell Island. Blackwell. And and he he does it, like he tries to jail. He tries to do a hunger strike. Jail is old as time. He tries to do a hunger strike and then he gives up and then he's like, I'm not going to break rocks for you. And then he does it. Like he just, he, he keeps trying to protest. He's like, I want to write. And they, they won't let him write. He keeps trying to protest. And then when they say no, he eventually just gives Fine. in. Fine. He spends a year there. When he gets out, he's greeted by 500 supporters and they parade him through the streets. Jesus Christ. And what a pain in the balls. And then, you know, perhaps, you know, perhaps just tired of this and uh, he decides to head west but all the th- way to st louis <laughs> that's exactly where he goes yeah you guys are all prudes here i'm not having fun anymore. i'm going to st louis we're I'm going to st. St. Louis. progressive <laughs> well okay so it's 1852 he he ends up in st louis and in st louis there's election between two democratic candidates one is pro-slavery one is anti-slavery the large german population in st louis supports the anti-slavery candidate he shows up and he starts whipping up anti-immigrant Sentiment against the Germans. A, then he, <laughs> oh, wrong move, asshole. Uh, <laughs> he leads a mob down the street to fight the Germans during this election. Jesus. And he's hit by a rock and he, by the Germans. He's knocked off his horse and he yells, right, so. rush the lop-eared Dutch, which I didn't know what lop-eared. I didn't know that How was How do you spell that? Lop, L-O-P, dash, eared. They're lop-eared. Lop-eared I don't, I don't, Dutch. I don't know well, what they've that, had their... They've had the ears shaven, the Germans. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. Or is it, is it, is it but like... But you know the Dutch have the big old donkey ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? It's a tall tale. That's fucking now, interesting, man. So these aren't your simple Dutchmen. <laughs> these are <laughs> lop <lop-eared laughs> <aren't your> <laughs> Dutchmen. I mean, it's some crazy shit. I mean... <laughs> so he and his mob, they take over a polling place, and they start just, like, fixing the vote. And the Germans are like, we are the ones who take over the polls. Don't you know this? <laughs> and as, as they're fixing the vote and, like, and, you know, ripping up ballots and, you know, writing their own ballots, he gets his horse back, and he r- parades it in front of the ballot place just shouting Revolutionary War speeches. And that's and then when he's done with that... Then they, the mob goes and tries to burn down a German athletic club. Yeah. He just does jingoism. And, and while they're trying to burn down this club, one of the Germans shoots at him. And they're like, oh, no, this guy's got a gun. But someone in the crowd misinterprets the shot as coming from a nearby German saloon keeper's house. 
the Ger- this this German man had a saloon and he lived next to it. It's a beer garden, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they go to this guy's it's house. Bush garden. And they try to break into his house. And as they're trying to break into his house, the German saloon keeper opens up the front door and shoots out of the front door. He's got a blunderbuss. And he hits a guy and he, he kills the man who's trying to break down his door. You don't and say. And at this moment, the mob goes, well, look what you did. And so they storm in, they break down his door, they break down his windows, they storm into his house, his pregnant wife is in the bed upstairs, they take the entire bed and throw it outside. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! And then they, they turn over his stove and burn down his house and saloon. When the firefighters show up, someone cuts the hose, and oh. the firefighters can't put the fire out. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, I guess we get to go home, boy! <laughs> Let's go back to the station house! Slide down some poles. Seems as if we've had a circumcision of the hose. <laughs> Somebody who did this had some extreme experience in cutting fat to mescent cylindrical objects. <laughs> if what? Only- <laughs> go, no, go on. Yeah. Well, I knew of a man. I knew of a man named Ned. <laughs> and this guy had a big hose. That's a fucking nightmare, bro. Yes. So the Germans... Are, are, are siding with the slaves with the yes well, they're anti slavery and, 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 and they are and they're going like oh okay like and now we're getting vilified because we're the invaders what a trip yeah and you're like, like holy who are the, shit who are the bad people the people that are pro slavery and then burn a house like like right. how do you in any way any sense do you think you're the in the right in yeah. this entire thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, acting like immigrants. But I mean, but, uh, but how many generations so, you've been here? So, almost out. almost kind of desperate for someone in their side to be shot so they can storm this building and finally Man. do what they wanted to do. Isn't it great that things have changed? Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, yeah. It's it's a thing of you know, uh, you know, shooting of kids and uh, somebody kneels during a football game. Right. And then that becomes the. Hey! Most- Inflammatory yeah. thing that ever happened in the world, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, d- d- this thing that bandied about again with the language. Mm-hmm. We talked about defund the police, mm-hmm. for instance. I'm sorry, it's a short detour here, but critical race theory. <laughs> it's like, yeah, are you talking yeah. about accurate history? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, it well, is what? the name of the discipline, it's but, called critical race, but it's there's no theory if it's accurate history. Well the, well, the theory of like the what what people are complaining about isn't even the theory. Yeah. They're complaining They're about what you're something. talking about, which is accurate history. Yeah. The actual critical race theory is levels beyond what Just people are history. even complaining yeah. about. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they're totally they're confounding the f- twenty different things. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah it, uh, it's just another one of these things that I'm like, oh, if you're throwing theory around, no, it's, that is the name of the discipline. Cri- critical race theory is like evolution. These are the systemic the things discipline. in America that cause or that are these problems, uh, and these people are going, uh, I don't like Martin Luther King's. Speeches. That's critical. It's like that's not Martin Luther King's speeches is not critical race theory. Yeah, that's just saying, hey, what if you treated us like regular human beings? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just it. It sounds like critical race theory is is, is just like left wing propaganda. That's the, the way they're conflating it. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Exa- well, exactly. And, and it's not. Yeah, and they're no, and and the it's fact not. They, they think they're saying it, they're teaching it to elementary school kids. No, you know, like you said a few no. episodes ago, if they're teaching your kid critical race theory, you should be happy because your kid's in grad school. Your kids, <laughs> yeah, kids in law school. They, <laughs> yeah, that, like, critical race theory started in law schools. Uh, almost every book written about critical race theory is about is how a the book, law is applies a book in to law people. school. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. They're not. Te- it's, <laughs> Anyway, sorry, short detail. No, no. But anyways, race is gay too. <laughs> I don't believe in it. So a, in a warrant in St. Louis is put out for Judson. Uh, he skips town and he ends up in Illinois where he marries again. He's 31. Uh, she's 13. Jesus, hell. Yeah. Now that's a flip. <laughs> that's the ex- that's, <laughs> that's it's a like flip. A pal- it's like a palindrome. Did they, did, was he a student of critical <laughs> age theory? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Critical age. Wait, how old am I? I thought I. W- I mean, if you put thirty-one in a mirror, so we have so much in common. I we both like have one and three in our prime numbers, ranges. and you're in the prime of your life. Now, Yana, she's an old soul. <laughs> New hole. Oh God. Uh, I, I, I Jackson guess, hole. I, I guess the the good news is that he, they weren't really together very long. 
He basically, it seems like he marries her just so he can hide in her family's house. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, Thanks. I guess. Listen, man, I don't even want to fuck you. Man. Thanks, sister. I <laughs> guess that's the, yeah. Uh, We're actually yeah. just friends. <laughs> we got a lot in common. It's just the chemistry's not there, but you got a really, <laughs> the you got a really deep basement. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, she really likes toys, and I'm just <laughs> hiding from the police. So she tells a lot of lies, like I do. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. We're I'm both, like, holy shit! All the time, I was like, oh, you got me. We're both in the coats and hats <laughs> and wigs. Uh, uh, uh. Don't look at me. I know nothing. Uh, yeah. So he's a, he he. Not long after he is eventually arrested and uh, brought back to Shit. St. Louis. <laughs> uh, some friends of his. Uh, I we- never liked you anyway. Your family sucks. Your hiding space sucks. Clearly, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. Fuck your whole family. <laughs> if you're gonna get fat when you turn sixteen. Oh my god. <laughs> sour grapes. This guy's got sour grapes about everything. <laughs> I think you're the bad one. <laughs> you ever met a 13-year-old child in 1852? Well, she's old now. <laughs> <laughs> she's still with us, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the story she can tell. <laughs> Should tell. <laughs> yeah, but can't because she has no voice anyway. <laughs> Bus line saw to that. <laughs> the, story, the story she could sign to us. Uh, signed Anonymous. <laughs> so he goes back to St. Louis uh, Some uh, some friends and well wishers pay his bail uh, He skips town I'm out of here And uh, uh, so this party Fuck sucks. you guys you didn't pay it fast enough You took too long I was in here dying Dying of starvation well, he's, he's, He skips town so he doesn't actually go to the trial uh, And so St. Louis would eventually uh, Collect on that But uh, he, he goes back to New York City He marries again this time to the widow Swart Huh? Now, the widow Swart, he used to have a publisher named Swart. I forget his first name. But when he got back to New York City, he went to find his old publisher, and he found that he had died, but uh, his wife uh, was supple. Yes. And uh, <laughs> and single. And he marries her. Uh, and this woman would, would uh, all be, she would bounce between being his the love of his life and also a thorn in his side nice. for the rest of his life. Oh, that's uh, hot. She was his fourth, uh, but not final wife. The next year, he's uh, now campaigning for the American Party, aka the Know Nothing Party, and he arrives in Boston. And when he's in Boston, uh, he just decides to marry an eighteen-year-old actress. Jesus hasn't gotten divorced. That becomes a scandal. He's a polygamist. He's a bigamist. He's a bigamist. He's a bigamist. But he's campaigning now for he's he's he's, get, he's taking his influence and he's he decides he wants to get into politics and so now he's running as like the head of the American Party, and he doesn't nothing. I I'll just tell you the stories of his time as this guy. Uh, he takes his campaign to Maine, where he claims as he was in Maine, an Irishman shot at his carriage. And then he whips up a crowd of 3,000 men who are watching or listening to him, and he whips them up in Maine, and they uh, then proceed to burn down the Irish Old South Church. Wow. And as they're burning this place down, uh, the firefighters show up, and the mob blocks them from fighting the fire. Right. And the church burns down. We're doing God's work, dude. (laughs) Yes. We got to burn this church down. (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I... it, I, I just the whole act of it. You go. Does any? Is this the right? You guys think this is the good move? I don't know. Well, it's, I mean, it, it, uh, <laughs> pointing over there is it, it, it's 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 still the it's, it's still the move with Trump. It's uh, yes. That, it's, the, I mean, the, and that's what the, he's that's what he's basically yes, doing. The, yeah. the guy with thirty six rape accusations says Mexicans are rapists. Yeah, they're coming here. They're rapists. Why would I know? And it's, yeah. uh, like, mm-hmm. what the fuck are you talking about? You're the yeah. rapiest motherfucker of all time. That's how I know. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, trust me, don't it's ask like, how. But, but you mm-hmm. just point, you just point, and you point, and you go, like, like, like it's, yes. it's, it's, it doesn't really fail. You know, P.T. Barnum said, mm-hmm. there's a sucker born every minute. Nobody so it's, over, it's, Nobody uh, ever lost a dollar underestimating American intelligence. American intelligence, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, so it's, it's lies, tall tales, yeah, promises you can't keep. I and mean, I think Goring said the same thing during the Nuremberg trials. Was like, yeah, I, all we had to do was just give them B- bigger lies, and, yeah, and so, people have something to fear. And yeah. you know, and I, yeah, you have to imagine that you know, in the moment when he's there, he's the 
he's recognizing the attention and the the heat of the crowd rising when he when he gets them oh, angry yeah. and he's like, well, like, yeah. There's a reason why Donald Trump is the only guy that does live rallies like Adolf Hitler. Yeah, he feeds off it. Yeah, and it makes him feel happy. He's like yeah. the clown from It. Yeah, exactly the same, Aaron. It's very so, salient. As Judson is cogent. As Justin is riding through Christian. Maine, so for you know, for you know, not first, but one of the things that they burned down this church, and then he heads up to Bangor, Maine. I want you to beat every Irish man with his own shillelagh. We all float up here. <laughs> well, he's in Bangor, Maine. He stirs, he stirs up anti-Catholic sentiment, and after he gives his speech, a group of men uh, abduct a priest and then tar and feather him Jesus. and leave him to die of exposure. Oh God! And he does die of exposure, despite the feathers. Yeah, I mean, you think it'd be a warm coat, and the tar is usually warm, and you, you say, what happened? Aaron, what? <laughs> it's a protective layer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, he will, he it's a, a coat. He was exposed to tar. Yeah, <laughs> and feathers. Yeah. He was a smoker. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tragedy. I'm not under, not undermining it. And then, you know, <laughs> and he's not riding with, like, a large caravan. It's basically just him. He's Basically, just by himself this entire time, and starting riots. Yeah, and but also he, he's getting paid for appearances. Jesus Christ! Uh, and something he would do throughout his life would be like, "Hey, I'm going to show up and talk about stuff, and that's going to pay for me to stay in this town and then go to the next town." Yeah, yeah. because you know, again, there's no like you know not again, but there's no credit cards back then. Sure, like, the money you have is the money you have. But in, in the yeah. same way of the Trump thing, imagine paying like. A, we're having the hate monger speak next week. Yeah. yeah. He's going to show us what parts of our town to burn. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck yeah. is going on? It's, yeah. it's, it's something to do, I guess. Yeah, it's like imagine if the, the Joker was a traveling stand up comedian. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, exactly. The comedian, the Joker's coming. (laughs) Yeah. And he's going to come show us anarchy and chaos and brother against brother type of shit. Oh, man, I can't wait. I burned down my house for this man. We've been talking, real quick, you said, we've been talking about the fucking, the terrible Quora stuff. The terrible chorus. The, the, Quora, the, 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 Quora the, they'll send you the emails like oh, the, the question is like, yes. what, what makes Spain European? How did how did that become a website? Or whatever, it just, dude, it, it's, it boggles because, the mind. But the same way people do. What church should I burn down? <laughs> yes, I guess but, so. but idiots asking questions. <laughs> but, yeah. but so it's idiots that are like racist asking questions about yeah. like why is why is why Greece is, and Italy why, part of Europe? What it's like? Oh, they invented the word. <laughs> that's, and that's, then and then the next email will be. What if the Joker looked at Cthulhu? <laughs> Who would blink? Jesus Cause, Christ. Because you're supposed to lose your mind. Yeah. Jesus Christ. When you look at Cthulhu. And I'm like, he'd become Batman, I'm, I'm I like, guess. I don't I'm know. Like, Who logged in? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, here's the best answer. <laughs> yeah, and then some other asshole uh, answering him. Like, well, depending on which Joker you're talking about. And, and I get an email for it. Why, do you, what if the why didn't you looked- sign up for this? I, I don't. Ever, sometimes you have, I don't like, ever remember signing up for anything, yeah. Matt. At John, all. John, every, and honestly, every day if I did, you sign it up. was one time. If I did, it was probably something I was looking up for profiles. <laughs> it was probably something one and time 10 in, years ago. And now I'm trapped in this, <laughs> in this thing, though. You know you can click on subscribe. Because it used to be like <laughs> Yahoo Answers But it or entertains me so much <laughs> where I'm like. I'm like, these fucking dumbass questions come in. Like, what if the Joker looked at Cthulhu? Never thought about that. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Ever thought about Check that? Check me. <laughs> Check me, atheist. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, continue. So, he's still in Maine. Uh, after Banger, Maine, where uh, they, uh, uh, the, group, the group of guys kills a priest, uh, he's, he, he's riding his carriage through a small town, and he runs a group of men off the road. And you have, nice. to, I, you have to imagine, I, he's probably wasted. He's probably drunk a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I don't know what else makes a man do what he does here. He later tells, like, you know, uh, at first. They tried at, to gang fuck me. At, yeah, I mean, basically, at first, he, he arrives in this small town, and he's like, oh, some guys tried to rob me, and I, I, fe- I fended them off. But the real story is he's riding through this small town in Maine and he's on this, uh, this small road and he rides a, a group of men off the road with his carriage. Then he stops his carriage and he says, would you guys like a ride? 
And then as they approach, he shoots at them. And he hits one of them. And so the guy goes to the sheriff and is like, can you arrest the, this guy for shooting? So they arrest him. But the court he goes into is packed with American Party people. And he claims self-defense saying that he thought they were Irishmen. <laughs> I mean, come on, what do you want? <laughs> what do you expect me to do? There's yeah. a bunch of Irishmen on this that- road. Is the the Irishman panic defense? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. I then what I think to be normal, God fearing Americans into my carriage, just, and as soon as they get in, what do I notice? They're Irish. They're Irish. Yeah. What do you expect me to do? It, your stand, honor? Your, stand your ground law. Yeah, it, straight but, up. But he invited them to come to the carriage. The closer and they shoot, at your them. honor. The closer they got, the curlier I saw. <laughs> the redder their, their hair was. I swear to God, it was only until it was too late that I realized mm. I made such a grave mistake, your honor. I, I had no choice but to uh, remove my weapon and fire it upon the perpetrators. I thought he was Sean Hennessy. Then as he got you could closer, call them he was you Sean want, Irish, Hennessy. Sir. <laughs> yeah, I. It just like. Just the fact of like what he really did, would a sober man do that, or would a drunk man do that? It seems more like a drunk man would do that, I suppose. Uh, at, at least intoxicated with power. Yeah. Yeah. Or... You've gotten away with everything. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you're... And, and, and also, a, a crack shot and an accomplished liar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Deadly. Yes, it's a... Together. Yes. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So because like, of oh my god because of all of the people in the jury and the judge and the American party <laughs> claiming self defense cuz they thought they were Irish <laughs> he's acquitted and but his political aspirations and both the American party and the Northern thing party themselves they both die out not long after this because in America the topic of slavery became the big thing. And he writes this whole... I got opinions on that too. Hold what, on. So his, <laughs> his... He writes like... I think it's like a 10 point uh, a list of like the American party, the Know Nothing Party about, about slavery. And one of the points, point number seven, is that they take no stance. And in America at this time... The, there is no, there's no room for no stance. Yeah, Peter Pan or Peter Parker, man, under <laughs> yes, your head. Yes, exactly. There's no no stance. And and so because of this, no, like it's done. The oh, No yeah. Nothing Party. Thank you for establishing your irrelevance. Now. Exa- that's exactly the No Nothing Party. And well, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Yes, jury's out. <laughs> But what do you think? We're waiting about, to see how everybody. We're waiting to see how this sub, shakes out. Subjugating another human life. <laughs> yeah. Are they immigrants? Ah! It's, you know that's not for me well, to say. Well, from somewhere else, <laughs> <Yeah>. kinda. <laughs> yeah. You know it's weird when you have more respect for the guy that wants to subjugate. <laughs> yeah. Then the yeah. one that's like, Ow, Ooh. I. At least he's taking a stand. It's an ethos. At least, at least it's at least it's an ethos. At least he's b- b- sticking the line. You know, in the <laughs> sta- and uh, we don't understand why, but. <laughs> Uh, so so as uh, so this you know so he, as this dies out he just goes back to writing and and by by 1858 he's living in a, ca- a, a cabin in the Adirondacks nice and uh, he's just writing stories just like nonstop writing and Pop drinking and drinking and drinking and this is where one of the crack shot stories uh, he he shows up at a bar uh, in in a, a local Adirondack town and uh, he asks for a beer and as the bartender goes and gets him a beer he fires a shot. Just over the bartender's head, shit, Ping. and he says, and, and he says to him, "That's how William Tell did it." And uh, either the bartender was uh, fine. I guess the bartender was fine with this because he didn't kicked out, get kicked out. And then he bought another. The second time he bought a beer, he did the exact same thing, and gave him a bald spot. <laughs> <laughs> so give him ball- an inverted mohawk. And he yells at him, that would have taken a damn small apple off your head, young man. Uh, and so he, there's just these stories of him are growing thr- throughout the town, but he's just writing nonstop, right? And he's, he's also, he marries again. Nice. And she's a fertile nine. <laughs> 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 she has not had <laughs> the first menses, but we'll we'll wait. Well, this one seems like uh, you know, you know, I, his marriages always seemed like there was convenience. 
Yes, but or, but, or, but, or, but, or, but it also, sounds horribly inconvenient. But, but also talk. some some sort of no, but but no, you're hiding out in their house because of the marriage. He, uh, the, the marriage kept him intermittently sober. He would sober up for for the marriage, for the wedding. Yeah, he was. It would be, but but you know, and then when he was sober, he would also write a lot, and so he would go on a bender. And he would drink a ton, and then he would sober up because he's like, you know, oh, he, man, I he, and, 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 and he did love, he did love this woman, oh. b- because, I well, I it seems like that. Yeah. After uh, <laughs> his his uh, sh- uh, not long after, you know, uh, a couple of years of marriage, she uh, is giving birth to their first child, and she dies giving birth, and the, and, the, and the child dies not long after. Oh no! And he buries the commonplace. Them. He buries them in a grave behind it's the so house. Sad. He yeah. buries them in a grave behind the house, and then he burns the house down. Damn! Because he just he's like, the, you know, there's a, a form of personal devastation. It seemed like. Mm. What do you think? Some Germans live there. <laughs> Houses infested with Irishmen. I, I found out she was half Irish and half German. I had to burn the whole fucking thing to the ground. I mean, he goes through these marriages, and 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 he, the, it it's it's very. Some of them he's, some of them are 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 are, are he's smitten with, and some of them opportunities are opportunities, yes, and yes. and it seems like he keeps going back and forth because the next he not long after he then builds another cabin, marries another woman, a month later she's pregnant, and two months after that he abandons her. Jesus. And so you know then it it almost seems like is that one to fill the void of the actual loss you felt. Mm. And then you go, well, this, this loss, the, this doesn't actually, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you have to say from the whole path of everything, not necessarily a good guy. Yeah, very unstable. Yes. Uh, Highly. Yeah, f- you know, vic- uh, abused as a child. Uh, well, and not necessarily. He was beaten, but that was pretty standard. Yeah, well, so yes, that's still. I mean, it still it remains. Went, no, no, I understand what you're saying because you're right. You're right. Well, it, yeah, it, it was, was part the standard. To to do his part, but it, it's still traumatic. Yes, I mean, yes, absolutely. There are reasons that, I mean, when when those things happen culture wide, that they, they still they have they a, reverberate. Yeah, and there's a reason he wrote a story Aaron, about it. No. Aaron, in all fairness, culture wide, with the softening. Would you throw your dad's law books in the fire and not expect a severe ass whipping? <laughs> there are people that wouldn't get beat for that. Yeah, but would you and I not expect it? Uh, depends on how old I was. Get the fuck out of here, you <laughs> fucking liar. But, but child abuse was way more commonplace. No, no, no. For so, that act specifically, but it seemed like it was ha- it happened more often than that. Uh, I'm guessing. I if he was that, that much was of a the shit, one, that it, was the one we heard of. Yeah, I mean, I, I I I don't know, and I and I don't think he wrote about necessarily any other things like that. Yeah, no, and, I, I you know, and, it, and, it, and, it, it may have been that that was such a unique case. It was transformative uh, in itself. Also, also, I do have to say, if that is commonplace. The, the routine beatings. It's a lot easier to throw your dad's law books in the fire. <laughs> Certainly. There yes, is, there's, there's a back and absolutely. forth. Absolutely. That's very much... Over- Clearly you're not reading them. The, the, I mean, the, the origin of Carl Panzram and stuff, is, hitting back right. becomes part of... Mm-hmm. And, I mean, there is a story that Brinklin tells where um, uh, uh, a bunt line when he was a kid, and I, I, it's kind of painted as, as his father had kind of a, 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 a... Not a mean streak, but kind of like a... a, a a skid mark. <laughs> a, a, a dark sense of humor with this kid, with with Ned. You know, one time Ned was, um, he was he was when he was a kid. Well, he's the failed writer. When he was a kid, yeah, yeah. When, when I mean, this Ned, origin, no, but, alone. But, but, but this is you know, even before that, like you know, when Ned was a kid, he was scared off by a bear one time when he was in the woods. And then another, like he told his dad about this. Another time, he was walking through the woods, and his dad pretended to. Be a bear. Ah, you motherfucker, come here. You know, it, but also, like, you know, the, the kind of thing happened to me when I was camping in my, my parents' backyard when I was a kid. And in retrospect, like, I think that's really funny. Yeah. Yes, it is and funny. That's and, why you and, don't talk to strangers. But throwing, like, books are, you know, back, books are expensive. Like he, he didn't, he absolutely should not have been beaten. But given the time, you're right to expect 
that you will get beaten if you throw your dad's it law books into a, the fire. Sentence. Especially as a he's bankrupt, he's it's a failed a, principal. A, a, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah. And it's, maybe he maybe was he asking quote unquote asking for it? I mean, it's not that's not a very so good maybe phrase, he wasn't but, uh, maybe he wasn't beaten enough. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> uh, now we're he didn't getting, learn his lesson. Now we're getting somewhere. He didn't learn his lesson. <laughs> <laughs> because he figured he figured he could get away with the shit. Because sometimes, sometimes, one good beating is all you need. Well, as you've seen, mm-hmm. he has. I told you that story about that kid. I saw his dad whip the shit out of him at that pool party. <laughs> He had, he fucking he got his shit together after that. I mean, I, and, and I don't. I it's know, probably the shame. I don't think could, anyone should be spanked. But the last time I was oh, with, I was spanked. This was. I stopped. I stopped lying. I was spanked because I lied, and I stopped lying after that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's just a thing where it's hard to describe, but the eyes go wide, and you realize. Ooh, shit! This sucks, and yeah. I need to not do that dumb shit. And that, uh, also, and it's, lo- and it's low, like it's. You know, a beating on a ten-year-old is different than a spanking on a yes, like because it, it's it's well, lower the, damage the, physically, <laughs> but the the impact psychologically is enough to like it's like the first time an ape mm-hmm. man heard thunder, and like oh shit. But what, what, the, yes, the the, uh, yes. the yes. mythology the that point, you ascribe to absolutely, it absolutely, is so much more powerful. Absolutely, the point of it is the same thing as. It's the emotional shock. Huh? It's not the level of yeah. ass whipping. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it, no, it, it, it's that a child thing. endures. Right. It's not as if like, oh yeah. man, I told you know some shit that wasn't that true, and then my dad like headbutted me. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not like that. It's just like he really went to town with it, a couple of laughs and a riot. I mean, he was impeccable. <laughs> I mean, honestly, his form was <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was graceful. <laughs> and well, and, and I'll, I'll I'll say like. When I when I reminded my parents of that, no recollection. Years later, didn't remember. But when I told them about that, they started crying. <laughs> Be- smack them because they were like, "They're like, I thought you were a better fighter." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but it made it made them sad that they. I thought we gave you enough LSD that. to forget that. And yet, it's like at the same time, like well, it fucking worked. But you know, it's like I know you shouldn't do that, but it worked. Well, and and but they were, you know, it's like they were like, "Oh fuck, I wish we never did that." Yeah, I mean, but also, I, what the fuck? Uh, who raised them? Some psychos? Yeah, yes. who raised yeah. that? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Exactly. So you go like everything they do. Every, they, everything they did was better than what that was and, done and, to them. And, yes. and that's the same thing with every generation. Yes. And so now look where ideally. we are. And now I, I could be like, and now, I, and now look where we are. I could be like, I know, fuck, I, I, I have a heart. My parents, like, my parents, they went through a goddamn yes. Marine Corps fucking yeah. like trauma camp. I'm like, I have nothing to complain about. I'm fine. Yeah. Some shit sucked. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. But like, Compared to them? Come on. You know, our, we do all this shared trauma that we... Oh, shut up. Did you ever miss a meal? <laughs> Let me bring it back. Bring it all back. So. Maybe he wasn't beating. We're, we're the, how long was that tangent? Not long enough, because I could keep going. <laughs> you heard it here. The pros and mostly pros of... If you're just jo- if you're just joining us, the <laughs> ass whipping wasn't severe enough. I, I didn't ask for another tangent. <laughs> David. It might have been se- the frequency was low, the intensity was high. <laughs> so maybe so wrong. it's 1861 now, year of our Lord, <laughs> and perhaps bored. He's still he's still writing these stories. Abandons his new wife, and he decides that he's going to join the Union in the Civil War. Hmm, and. Uh, Maybe it was a drunken thing. I no one. There's no. There's no. The coats were better. There's no record uh, of of why or or where is he living at this point? Well, he, so he's in the Adirondacks. So at first he joins a group of like 1,500 hunters who like form a platoon, and he goes to New York City, and he's like he meets with he meets with someone in the Union Army, and he's like we're gonna be a, a thing. This is us, and they're like oh, okay, and he's like I want to lead them. And they're like, no, I don't think so. And so then eventually he he joins um, a unit and is in his station near Petersburg, uh, where the Union has a line in the Civil War. And 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 at first he's I th- at first he's in I think he's in D.C. and he's like you know he he 
you know, he like, he rides the horse and he like steals a flag and then the Confederates, uh, they arrest him. This is before, before the, the breakaway. When there's just rabble, when there's just rabble rousing, and he steals the flag, and then he's a, a prisoner, and then they're like they release him immediately, and he goes back to D.C. But then eventually he's stationed near Pitts, uh, Petersburg, where there's a hard Union line, uh, you know, uh, 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 against the Confederacy. Is it a hard pipe hitters Union? It, it could have been, <laughs> and, and at first he is a great soldier. And he's really helpful, and he crack as, shot as a soldier and a scout. You know, he's he's telling great stories in camp. He's keeping everybody's uh, spirits up. But at the same time, you know, he's going out and he, you know, he's riding the horse and reading the lines and saying, "Oh, I see, I see this here." One of these days, you know, we're gonna be fighting some Germans, and that's when I'm really gonna go to ground. <laughs> but but after after a while, and it, it seems very much in the style of of him. Uh, winter arrives. It's cold. The Confederates start raiding the Union lines. This sucks. I'm out of here. So then he started heading out to scout with uh, a flask full of whiskey. And Uh-oh. when he came back, it was empty. But then he had some bullshit stories. And it was like he wasn't even scouting anymore. He was just kind of riding out just so he could come back and tell stories. Oh, man. It was, the Sasquatch was Venusian was and height. Yeah. Big, pendulous, hairy breasts covered in fur. <laughs> Nipples <laughs> two fathoms long. Oh, man. You guys are lucky that I shot that <laughs> sheaf squatch. That was the time of my life. <laughs> you know, it was really about the sheaf squatches I shot along the way. <laughs> it, anyway, slavery's bad. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, eventually he's just... <laughs> He's just not helpful anymore, and he he gets sick, and he loses a lot of weight, and he runs off. He runs back to D.C. in Baltimore, I think, where he, he runs into the widow's sword again. Holy shit! And she heals it. She, you know, she's they spent a month like he she he had lost, he was down to like ninety five pounds, and this is a man who was like you know five eight five nine five ten. You got any you know? spam so like, or anything? And uh, she she heals him, but then he start once he's healed, he starts drinking again. Mm. She kicks him out of the house. Fuck out of here. Uh, he sleeps on her stoop, and when she won't let him in, he jumps in the Hudson River. <laughs> and a fisherman fishes him out. <laughs> I'm on a Hudson strike. <laughs> he tries to commit suicide, and then a fisherman <laughs> takes him out of the water. <laughs> and he tries to hang himself with his bandages. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Thinks he's the Pope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, so he, he gets fished out of the river, and he runs back to the wife that he abandoned, this woman, Kate. And... <laughs> And then he his next thing again he's like abandoned the Union Army, but ag- but it doesn't really matter. And he's <laughs> he, it doesn't really matter that he's a wall. Yeah, you know that he's it, such a pain in the ball. Yes, exactly. God, and what a night in between drinking binges, he starts he becomes a temperance speaker. So when he sobers up, oh, he starts God. making speeches decrying the, the, the terrors of alcohol. Drinking. Oh, God. And then, then he'll get completely wasted for a week. And then he'll be back on the temperance. This guy anyway. is the most <laughs> caricature of everything that's wrong with <laughs> yes, like American yeah. cult of personality. Yes. Yes. Like the preachers that are smoking meth and having, you know... Yeah, anonymous gay sex and yes. tell them about yes. preaching against the evils and just of, and, and yeah. the, the hard, 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 hard transformation. It's like I put down my gator tails and I picked up my Bible. <laughs> Game yeah. over. Yeah, boy, I'm glad. Boy, I'm glad I was born again. Anyway, now I'm firmly here. Yeah, I relapsed. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm an imperfect man. I'm a sinner, but we're all. Like, I mean, this way, yeah, God it works in mysterious ways. Now yeah. I'm being tortured by I was God. Doing crazy shit with hookers, man. It was nuts. Now anyway, I'm glad that's over. Back in Sunday school, let me teach you how to not do that. I'm enlightened like, because it's a, it's it's not an ongoing process. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, he so he, I mean the temperance movement is growing, and he joins that as as uh, this intermittent speaker, and uh, he heads out to California, California to uh, you know tour and speak. Probably smoke a J. Yeah, it doesn't go well. They got a lot of Chinese people there. Yeah, he does. He, he, <laughs> there? He, he does attack them, too. See? He doesn't He doesn't forget that he's anti-immigrant. California. He got a whole new type of immigrant. And uh, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't go well. If you um, thought these Kansas Germans were bad, check out these Chinese guys. There was one, there was one paper that advertised that uh, the evening was appropriate for ladies and gentlemen. It's from Brooklyn. Uh, it didn't turn out that way. And this is what the paper wrote. 
Ned Buntline, the notorious, was here last Saturday night to style his bla- blathering a, quote, lecture, would be burlesquing the English language. To, 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 to style his blathering a, a lecture would be burlesquing the English language. Buntline may be a hero Who and a man that? respected by his own land. If so, we advise him to travel home instanter. Instanter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Get over there! Yesterday! The Order of International Order of Good Templars made a bad hand of it when they started that polluted and nonsensical piece of humanity around the state and preached temperance and morality to Californians. A man must practice what he preaches, and the people saw in his countenance that his sermons and actions were not alike. <laughs> we can smell the rum <laughs> on you, sir! <laughs> Plus, we're already all chilled out from all this surf and stuff. <laughs> and so, like, he, he, he goes through California, and then he heads to the Midwest. And when he gets to the Midwest, he starts bad-mouthing Californians. <laughs> They're animals. And calls them drunks. And the San Francisco Chronicle hears about this, and they write of him. They write, he coolly asserted that, quote, seven-tenths of the adult population of California, male and female, went down to their graves through drink. End quote. Of course, the hoary hero of 10,000 drinks said this, quote, with malice afterthought, end quote. His temperance farce was far too flimsy to deceive anybody out here but a small number of temp- temperance advocates who took his reformed, drunkard libertine by the hand and encouraged his <laughs> hypocritical proceedings. The colonel's lies arouse no enthusiasm. They simply evoke our contempt. Wow. And, ah, it, San Francisco Chronicle, yeah. clapping back hardcore. <laughs> yeah. And it seemed like uh, Edward Jensen had pretty much uh, shot his shot and run his race, and uh, that was kind of it. But uh, what no one knew in the San Francisco Chronicle or anywhere when they published that, that on his way back to Chicago, Judson hit on the story that would change American culture forever. The culture? Yes. And we should take a little break. Oh, Let's take a little break. Oh, come on. <laughs> BRB. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Look at him. Look at this guy. I was looking at the camera. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. No, man. You lied to So, Edward Judson. E. Edward Zane, Carol Judson. Easy CG. Temperate speaker, drunk. <laughs> <laughs> He's riding back from California to Chicago. Eventually in Chicago, he'd make some speeches or, you know, somewhere in the Midwest about how drunk everybody in California was. It's a mess out there, let me tell you. But before he even does it, you know, what he's basically doing at that point, he's just... Scapegoating. Well, he's paying is paying for his trip by making In, these speeches. Inciting, yeah, yeah, yeah. But on his way back, he, he takes the Union Pacific Railroad and North Platte, Nebraska, July 1869, he gets off the Northern the Union Pacific Railroad and he sees the usual salesmen and wives and gamblers that follow armies, you know, or as they move across the country and uh, he heads to nearby Fort McPherson. And why, no one's really sure. Uh, there's no strong reasons or accounts of it. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe, booze. Yeah, maybe for some booze or, or some gambling. Uh, uh, he, he later says he had he was going to make a, a, a temperance speech in a day or two. Uh, Uh-oh. But, uh, I had a good bar next door to the venue I was preaching about sobriety. Yeah, or, or, or as, as, as Brinklin and, and Monaghan tell, maybe he was looking for a hero. Because uh, five days before he arrived, the U.S. Army had attacked the Cheyenne village. Uh, they said it was to free two white captives uh, the Cheyenne had there. And uh, one soldier was killed, uh, one U- U.S. Army soldier was killed, and a, but a major of that regiment uh, of the Army... Uh, tricked and then killed a man named Tallball, Tallbull, who was the leader of that group of Cheyenne. And uh, perhaps Judson was going out there to meet this guy because what Judson had done throughout his life was to hyperbolize... Tall tail it. Mm-hmm. Tails. And tall bull. Tall bull. 
And so Judson, Judson gets to Fort McPherson, and he goes to this army major, and he says, you know, what his ideas, and the army major doesn't want any part of it. I don't know about that, dude. And instead, he says, if you want a man to fill that bill, he's over there under that wagon. So Judson goes over to this Hammered. wagon, and he introduces himself to that man. He's a 23-year-old man named William Frederick Cody. Oh, Cody was an army scout in the early 1860s, and then in 1867, he took a job as a hunter to feed the Kansas Pacific Railroad, uh, the workers of the railroad. So his job was just to kill animals so they could, they could eat. No. In the, oh, seven, in the 17 the months, of in the 17 months he worked for that railroad, he claimed that he had killed over 4,200 buffalo. Mm. Which now was he a great big fat person? <laughs> This uh, Buffalo William uh, character. Uh, was he a great big fat person? Yeah, did he tuck his dick between his legs? And <laughs> say, hey, 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 silence of the Lambs. Oh, the killer okay. is Buffalo uh, Bill. Okay, yeah, yes. And uh, when Jodie me. Foster comes to the door, she's like, you, you know, you know, you know this girl. And he goes, oh, was she a great big fat person? <laughs> I did not remember that yeah. one. And then Jodie Foster goes. Yeah, she's a big girl. Yeah. Yeah. Only you guys would remember that. No, 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 no. That's a great big fat person. Is is a quote uh, of one of them uh, in a movie full of quotes? Of the of air. Oh, was she a great big fat person? Yeah, <laughs> it's so demeaning. It's like it does. It puts the lotion on his skin. Yeah, right. right. And, and Bubba Bill also has uh, like swastika bed sheets. Somehow. I don't uh, know who makes those. Amazon. It would, it, there wasn't an Amazon back then. <laughs> uh, well, deforestation has been going on for a while. True. Anyway, he claims he killed uh, 4,200 buffalo in 17 months, which is about 247 buffalo a month, <laughs> uh, which is just, uh, I guess oh, when you have a repeater rifle and uh, no sense of humanity, it's the thing you can do. I think or, he had, I, or know how to count, because that's impossible. Yeah, I, I think I, he had yeah. a Death Star. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was anyway. that a Winchester Death Star? <laughs> so, uh, in... Uh, in 1868, he joins the army again, but now he has a new nickname. And his name now is Buffalo Bill Cody. Mm. And that's probably why this major was like, well, that guy is the interesting one. So Judson and Cody, they go out on, a, on an expedition with the army, and they get to talking. And after talking with Cody, Judson realizes that he had found his hero. No shit. Yes. He was uh, 5'10". Good-looking guy. Nice. Long hair, beard. Uh, he talked well, respectable. Stay. Uh, se seemed like, a, you know, seemed like a nice guy. Right. And Judson goes back east, and in December of that year, 1867, he publishes his first story called uh, Buffalo Bill, the King of the Border Men. And in it, uh, you know, you know, one, one of these things Bricklin writes is that if you read Buntline stories now, you go, this is just full of cliches. Mm. But they weren't cliches when he wrote them. Sure. Yeah. They were cliches because everybody copied them. And right. half of the people copying them were him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, just, it's the same thing with, uh, uh, like, Seinfeld comedy. Yeah. Uh, observational yes. humor. Yes. Uh, it, at the time, it was, this is hot, daddy, hot. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the first version, the first story is uh, published in Street and Smith's New York Weekly. Um, uh, in serial version, uh, 1869, in March, uh, Back of the I, I don't know why I said 67, 1869, in March, 1870. And so it's Buffalo Bill, his, his sidekick, Wild Bill Hickok, a villain, uh, Jake McCandless. Uh, pro, the villain was a pro slaver, Missouri bushwhacker, whacker, and Buffalo Bill uh, was a frontier champion. This is from Brooklyn, who grew up to avenge the murder of his father by McCandles. And as he grows up, uh, he he uh, he also rescues his sister. And it's just you know, if hey, you've ever heard lie. any Wild West tale of a guy going out and fighting for honor and family. This is where it kind of begins. Yeah, I didn't really know, uh, and this is really exciting for me as a Avengers fan, uh, <laughs> that uh, Buffalo Bill and Wild Bill yes. overlap. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. I totally didn't they, know that. They, 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 were, they were friends. They knew each other. Now, why, why is this? Uh, 
And well, it's just separate legends, you know. Uh, I, I think it's I think it's Wild Bill, maybe that ends up like in the Deadwood series. Well, yes, he's the one uh, the, the with Dead Man's Calamity hand. Jane and mm-hmm. stuff. Wild Bill's a Dead Man's Hand guy. Now, Dead Man's Hand is aces and eights. Yes, but yeah, I, I, I yeah, I didn't. I remember know. that. That's why you get shot in the head for you. Don't Not cheat. four, but you have while you're shot. Full house. Yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, this this story, uh, it's a it's a hit. And it, it's not like it's the great, like, it's not like it's a huge hit, but it sells. Yeah, and it's, and it's archetypal of, you know, like, romantic tales, tales of knights. Yes, it, it, it's exactly, it just, okay, it's exactly but that. Now he's a cow, but now he's a cowboy. It's in a place that the people in America reading the story can relate to more than they can relate to King Medieval, Arthur. Exactly. Yeah, and I think there's something specifically American to the thing of the Western where the outlaw becomes deputized. And, yes. and right and wrong is just is like it, it goes through the heart of every man, mm-hmm. as you say, right. a lot. Uh, and 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 uh, well, it was a, it was it was a new world for them. So the, right. you know, there is no law, but the law that you right. But it makes you wary of declaring somebody an outlaw, which is inherently then you know kind of like mm-hmm. going to the. Uh, Almost the premise of the, the uh, twelve angry men sort of thing. Mm. Of like, well, who's to say? Right, <laughs> yeah, it, it's right. going there. Where it's like going. Well, he, yesterday he was a hero. Right. Today he's an outlaw. Yeah. You know, in, in a very Captain America way too. Mm. Right. Um, uh, What's well, it? It's a redemption story. America. I don't know if other countries are also like this, but America is always desperate for a redemption story. Uh, everyone like I mean, Hercules is a redemption. Story. You're right. Okay, yeah. So I mean, I, 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 I think anyway, maybe just maybe it's just human <laughs> nature. Right? But uh, yeah, like you, you, you can change. You can. Yeah, I oh, can change. You and, can change. And, and then struggling with what is right and wrong, as you're, I guess, probably obviously doing a, you know, conquest colonial path is, mm. is something that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is like the, also the minimizing under- the fact that. Yeah, it's a, you're localizing the struggle, minimize, and, and in that you're minimizing the f- the fact that you have to acknowledge that right. the fact that you are even on this land is exactly. because you had yes. to. Yeah. Well, yeah. and also, I mean, how many? And this is kind of a, a bit of a tangent, but you know, Buffalo Bill wasn't a conquistador, and he wasn't right. a pilgrim. He was an American was conqueror. An, yeah, he was, but he was born there. Yeah. And he was just there, and the rest of the con- the continent had not been. Uh, settled by American or, you know, white Europeans. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's just, well, well, I'm not going to, you know, what are the odds that any one of us in his shoes would put our foot in the ground and be like, you know what? I stop here. And because I feel bad about it, you know, you, well, no, no, it's like, it, 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 may I retort? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I would say, uh, you know, the obvious thing would almost be like a liver eating Johnson thing where he goes like, dude, I'm just actually in the woods and like I don't need to announce myself to the other white people because I am a creature of this thing uh-huh. and I'm totally down to just, you know, trade with the native people. Also, the people that killed my wife, they're all going to die to a man. <laughs> like, right. like that's a thing where you go like, it, he's not really coming out and being like, you know, deputize me. He's He's just... A guy that is a trapper yeah, the, in the but woods. These are, these are individuals, and what I'm getting at is, I know, yeah, but it's like uh, the, the odds are, like, listen, if you were born in Crete, you're gonna be also like, it's, you're you're a victim of where you're born and course, when you're born, of course, of course, and so like you're kind of a part of a machine as opposed to, you know, right. the operator of the machine. But there is right. a, there is a thing though where you kind of hope that. You know, being the Western frontiersman seduces you a little bit and makes you. A little bit kind of softer in how you view things, especially with, you know, like native peoples and stuff like that. And you go like, oh, yeah, fucking Jesus Christ. We're like really coming in on their shit and like raising it up. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, you know, at at this time, you know, Liberating Johnson and, and, and Cody are, are very different people um when when they have their definitive uh moments right. and, and you know for C- cody's 23 when right. judson approaches him yeah and he goes sure. hey and like just like pinocchio you want fame and fortune You're and, just a kid. Uh, and, and he was already a scout and he had apparently killed thousands of buffalo yeah. you know and probably in this sense of like oh there's so many i can just kill them all day a uh, very different sense of 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 
time and place. Yes, that and, and also to your point, live reading Johnson was a wall. Sure, so but you, also so, so he had a family. Like, but you know, you're an outcast, is what I'm saying. And yeah. years of life experience. Also, yeah. there's no fucking way this dude killed this many buffalo in that amount of time. <laughs> the buffalo were almost extinct. By, well, the, to- by mean, the time, maybe because the Ameri- of guys. No, like no, because the Native Americans almost hunted them to death. And th- the genocide of the Native American peoples brought the buffalo back from the brink. Look it up. We'll say that. I'm not saying it's a one to one trade. <laughs> I'd rather have people than Buffalo. We'll, so we'll save I'm that sa- for a Patreon. Yeah, you gotta pay to hear that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay. What so, kind of theory is that? <laughs> Buffalo Bill, the king of the border men. The story sells well. Critical stampede there. Not a giant hit, but it sells well. And, and he, would, uh, he would end up writing four more, I believe, and no more other than that. But uh, the, the spark. The spark had done its job. And in 1871, a playwright writes a play based on these stories. And it it does great business in New York. Nice. And it puts the idea of Buffalo Bill in the heads of, of, of the wealthy. Yeah. And to even to the point where it, it does so well that when Grand Duke of Russia visits that America in 1871... He goes on a hunting party, and he is overjoyed when uh, uh, this uh, American general Sheridan, I believe, but not D. Sheridan, but another uh, Sheridan, uh, pre- presents him, here's Buffalo Bill. The Grand Duke of Russia probably had come to America, seen that play. I have heard much and, uh, about yes. this Buffalo yes. Bills. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, lo- I love your pop <laughs> novels. <laughs> I understand your species abolition. <laughs> <laughs> is it called... Um, do you have, do you know the title of the, of that play? Yeah, because I have a guess. I believe it's just called. Uh, no, there's, there's it doesn't say. Because um, I had my dad had some like you know. Fucking well, well, trinket. so so here's it. That's not the only play okay. involved uh, with Buffalo Bill. So here's what what happens is there's a publisher that is in that hunting party. Nice. Sees oh this is exciting. So he, he convinces Bill, Buffalo Bill, uh, Cody, to come to New York where he hangs out with, Cody hangs out with Judson. And Judson wines and dines him and brings him to the Buffalo Bill play. At the end of the play, they bring Buffalo Bill on stage and everybody gives him a cheer. And then Judson says, guy, this is a genius idea. This is what it is. Judson and Cody then go to Chicago where in four, after they arrive in four hours, Judson writes... A new play. This one starring Buffalo Bill. Critics hated it. Huh. <laughs> hated they, it. They, it, was, it was just melodramatic nonsense to them. It was like showgirls. Uh, yeah. But, it, but as time would go on, you but, wanted, it would keep it all cult classic. <laughs> but hotter. Midnight shows. And, and, and uh, the, the Daily Herald uh, wrote, uh, The Drama of which we understand Ned, Ned Buntline is the author, is about everything in general, nothing in particular. Everything was so wonderfully bad that it was almost good. Nice. Uh, a reporter in Chicago uh, writes, uh, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, I couldn't find the <laughs> fucking, fucking egg. The goddamn, exit row was fucking blocked. with a goddamn mess out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I mean, fucking Jesus. B- <laughs> Buffalo Bills all over there. I mean, the fucking gals are singing. Chicago Times, uh, they write, on the whole, it is not probable that Chicago will ever look upon the like again. Such a combination of <laughs> incongruous drama, exorable acting, renowned performers, mixed audience, intolerable, intolerable stench, scalping. Intolerable stench? Scalping, blood and thunder, is not likely to be vouchsafe for, to the city for a second time, even in Chicago. Even. And, and yet, every single performance... Sold out. Sold, sold, out. sold out. Yeah. Because the crowd... Debauched was not critics. The crowd was regular yeah. people that, yeah. and it's, it would it basically it was just the th- dime novel crowd. It was just ran, it was three hours. It was the Buntline crew. Exactly. It was three hours, and it would be Buffalo Bill coming out like Judson as one of the per- performers too, feeding him lines. Yeah, and and <laughs> holy just, shit, I just annihilated three thousand buffalo. And they would have all these like all these white guys, one all, all these white guys dressed <laughs> like. Indians yeah. would just get mowed down by yeah. Buffalo Bill, and the crowd yeah. fucking loved it. 
Yeah. And it sold out time and time again. for two years straight. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Every performance for two years straight sold out. That's sick. And this yeah. is before the CIA had <laughs> any hand what? in American propaganda. <laughs> yeah. Could they replicate it? No. no. They couldn't even. T- they, there's. With a no. mind wipe, they couldn't they, have no, with, with, mind no wipe. No Operation Mockingbird's a fucking joke compared to this. Yes. You, tr- you try and replicate that. Yeah. You're, not, you're too smart. Good old. You're too smart to replicate yes. idiocy on this level. It takes. You, you got to go dumber. You got to be really smart to be really dumb. You gotta be, That's something you say, and it's very true. That's right. Yes. I feel like one of them was called Sitting Bull's History Lesson. It, it it might have been, but I, I I'm not fam- I'm not familiar with that with that title. Is it okay if I look it up while you look up your next thing? Sure. Okay. So, so people are freaking out for two years over this uh, uh, exploitation level stage show. Yeah, and it's, it's not even like Buffalo Bill's a good actor. Like no, it, no, no. It, it doesn't it, matter. No, it's trading on. It, it is the thing we talked about with. Uh, you know, in the Cannibal Holocaust, like mm-hmm. the Mondo movies, mm-hmm. here's shocking stuff, mm-hmm. right? And that's why earlier we were saying reality TV comes from the Mondo movies, right? Uh, it is sensationalist non art, but it's not nothing. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it, there's no, there's it's no movies. Pulp. It's just pulp. There's no movies. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just cheap shit, and the critics hate it. So it, the Prices aren't high. And so anybody can go see it. And for three hours, you're going to get a thing. That when, you, when you go back to town or wherever the fuck you're from, you can say, I just saw. Well, here's I the, just saw. And some then, shit. Then, here, then here, word of mouth goes where people, the, the, the middle and upper classes will go see it just because of the buzz. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It's so bad. It's good. Or it's, you got to see you show it. Me, yeah. Show me the New York Times uh, review. Of the monster truck rally. Yes, exactly. Yeah, what does exactly. the New Yorker have to say about SummerSlam? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's a hit. <laughs> so someone in the New Yorker or, or, or New York Times, they trash uh, 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 a restaurant. Some people want to kind of want to go to go to that restaurant to see what that trash looks like. Yes, yes. They're like, oh yeah, this does suck. Isn't that funny? Isn't it funny how much, like, we're now a part of knowing how, yeah. now I can tell people. Yes, like when we talked about the sisters, yeah. the people would queue up to throw tomatoes at them. Yeah, and they were like, "Well, every show sold out," and they're like, "Yeah, because it sucks." And they're like, "Well, well, how can that be true?" <laughs> and yeah. also, and also, does it? Yeah. So a- after after two years of selling out every single night, Cody uh, Buffalo Bill Cody realizes he's like, "I don't need Judson anymore." I'm Buffalo, goddamn fucking Bill. Yeah, he's a, you know it and. Uh, also, you know, Judson's a fucking drunk. Yeah. And yeah. he's probably a pain in the balls. <laughs> Who gets pissed at me every time I drink? And it, it's, it's like, like, it's not like... <laughs> you like that, huh? It's not like Judson can, like, <laughs> take it and be like, here's Buffalo, like, Buffalo Bill is Buffalo Bill. So he can... Yeah. He owns it whether he wrote it or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, he kept touring with the play. It's not like the WWE where China can't go out as China. Right. Especially when uh, John Cena is uh, around apologizing for her all the time. Uh, no, not that. That's an, that's an inside joke. Uh, so, Very good, Matt. So Buffalo Bill, he start, he just starts touring on his own. He eventually does bring in Wild Bill Hickok uh, for, briefly. But Hickok can't stand. He, like, he just he can't do it. In one of his performances, when the spotlight is shown on him, he shoots it out. No. <laughs> so he, just cool. can't, he just can't do it. I mean, that's kind of why they tell him Deadwood, because he's actually kind of authentic. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Like, yeah. The Wild West motherfucker. Well, I mean, he's only in it briefly, and then he leaves, and he, you know, he It's he such goes, an anachronism, the thing, like, all right, we got, like, during, in the country at this time, there were real cowboys, and there was also Broadway. Fake cowboys. Yes. And so, like, you know what? We're, we're going to get the, one of them authentic cowboys. It's like Bill and Ted. Yeah. Where they put Billy the Kid on the stage yes. at San Dimas High School. Yeah. And he's like, what? Lights, camera, action. What? <laughs> like, uh, what a weird uh, yeah. time and yeah. place. Well, it, it really is so, so well in Deadwood, because it's not yet a state in the show, and it is... 
you know, a frontier. There is surrounding the gold mine camps and the established town in Deadwood. You know, the native tribes that are like, get the fuck out of, like, get the fuck, fucking step off, right? And so these kind of strong men would be superior to the law. In some ways, yeah. Yeah. In, in reputation, yeah. Well, there wasn't any laws, so they yeah. were oh, right. Yeah, there was no laws. But, there's no swamps. But at the same time, everybody that was <laughs> kind of go <laughs> just, just, just. Yeah. It's very nice. It's very nice. At the same time, the people are hoping it will be a state, and it will be established, and it will be quote unquote civilized, right. and so therefore. Let's get a glimpse of that by having a, sh- a show where everybody just huddles around and watches some dumbass circus shit. Yeah, right. yeah well, you know, people in New York, the, there's no cowboys in New York, and then they can see, and it, instead of seeing an actor play a cowboy, they get to see an actual cowboy. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, no, it, no, it, no, it, no, oh, the exports in the, in the, in the East is totally the, the moneymaker. So, so what happens is um, over the, you know, it, Cody keeps touring with this show, but by 1883, you start doing the outdoor show, the Buffalo uh, Buffalo Bills Wild West, and that's the thing that eventually. I mean, he was already he was already huge in America. This is a thing that not only cements him in America, but then he tours Europe with mm-hmm. it. And so when you have the Europeans saying this is America, holy shit, you have this the the mythos. Is established yes. the 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 false identity mm-hmm. when you have another country countries believe oh, it. Oh yeah, then that's the reality. Well, the, whether it's they, true or not, they're kind of the spacemen. Yeah, they're going the final frontier, right? Yeah, I mean, play, play, like all these European places that have been settled. Uh, you know, the cities built for centuries. Yeah, fought over. And then here's a guy village saying, by village. there's land over there. Yeah, they get to look, kind of like live uh, vicarious. They get to relive their own history in, in, in with a new, yeah. like, a new, like, um, costume. On, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's why, you know, in movies, you know, the ca- cowboy movies were just samurai movies and samurai movies were cowboy, you know, mm-hmm. they, they adapted each other because the themes are the same. Mm-hmm. Or How, similar. However, you know, you got the the clap act is like, oh, well, I'm a fucking French guy. And like, this is how the Germans look to me. You know what I mean? Like you had you had more of a boogeyman with uh, what was considered, you know, the savage world from Europe. And they were kind of exploiting that. Oh, yeah, definitely, you mean definitely. With, the, with the Native Americans being the savages? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, there was. Uh, but I, but I think that's. True with every, but they 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 like that shit. Yeah, and the thing is, is that they because know, the barbarians were that for them. But they right? know that from their own experience, where they go like, well, the, bar- the barbarians are now uh, yeah. a, a lovely uh, yeah. German people, and now we have a train route to connect us all. And so, yeah. you, so you, but know, honestly, seriously, so you know it's savages. you know it's bullshit, but you still want to fall for the myth. Yes, of it was these a new it, monsters. We, we got a new boogeyman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, in 1873, Judson, Cody splits from uh, Judson. I'm out of here. And Judson, so we, in his style, he just writes another play similar to that. And while Cody is performing that, his play in big towns, Judson just goes to the medium-sized towns. Nice. Doing his version of the exact same play. <laughs> Where Buffalo Bill gets murdered at the end every time. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't a great success uh, because Judson was usually drunk. And in order to get to not drink alone, he got the other actors really drunk. Nice. Oh, and so... Uh, this he, must have been a sight to behold. He wasn't making a lot of money, and, and part of the reason he wasn't making a lot of money is because now he had three wives that he had to support. You don't say. Jesus fucking Christ, I got three wives, I've got 12 drunk actors, I can't ride or drink alone, I'm fucking penniless here. Wild Bill's out there killing every goddamn buffalo on the junior trade. Yeah. 
Uh, SAG after's looking for their dues. <laughs> <laughs> so he had the widow's sword. He had this uh, woman, Kate, who was married to uh, maybe his, uh, you know, one of his longer term wives. I think I'm going to burn my house down again just for the insurance money. And, uh, yeah, he, he, and he had multiple children with his woman, Kate. And then, uh, and then his newest and final wife was Anna Fuller. Uh, they were married in 1871. He was 50, and she was no 18. No, okay. Oh. That's not bad. Months? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I sh- I should Please also, say years. Please say years. I should also note that Judson uh, had a very rich uncle who died and left a lot of money, none to Judson, but left a lot of money to Anna Fuller's family. Get the fuck out. And when he married her, he got that money. No. Yes. His own uncle left yes. money to some other lady's family? Yes, because he lived in that town with that family. And I like that. And, and, and he, he left, he's like, here's a gold watch, here's $1,000 to you, here's... Et cetera, et cetera. And Justin, now listen, you gotta, stay, boa. you gotta stay away from a nephew, okay? Yeah. <laughs> if that guy comes in here... He might come in as a anonymous or El Strangio. <laughs> His name what is... What these days, some wild-eyed... <laughs> <laughs> some wild eyed riders gonna come in in a Panama hat and a Spanish coat, or maybe he'll cloak. come in in a cloak. <laughs> cloak. It's a cloaking device. It's a cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Might call him some strange. Now, the Spanish cloak, I believe, is a red cape. <laughs> <laughs> so the bull can find you. And uh, with his, with his uh, new family's uh, money, he builds his grandest house yet. Now, his new family is actually his old family, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's in Stamford, New York. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's where he was before. Around that area, yeah. Uh, it cost about $25,000 at the time. <gasps> it's about 557000 today. Jesus. Which doesn't seem like a lot, but I feel like, you know, back then, like... In that area? Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of land to go around. Uh, it had... Uh, I think it had... That's a, a lot it, of money. It had 120 acres. Yeah. That's and uh, 20 acres were kept as a game preserve. Uh, he also had his favorite well, room was the Arbory and Curiosity Shop. Uh, and he had a rare collection of he guns. He had a tree room? Yeah, he had a rare collection of guns, pistols, sabers, and other implements of war- of warfare. He had a library sanctum, he remarked. Uh, a sanctum? Uh, sanctum? Where he did, uh, he, he did most of his writing. And uh, he also had uh, what was arguably the largest American flag in... In America, uh, 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 and here's a, here's an artist's rendering of how it looked at the time. I'm gonna hold it up to the. Uh, Holy shit! What the fuck? I don't know if that'll work. Yeah, fuck it. Maybe I'll fix that later. Anyway, John, you're looking at it, Aaron. I can't really see an American flag. Oh, it's on the pole. <laughs> it's on the flagpole. Anyway, that's giant, pretty big, man. If that's the scale, hey, a giant fucking house for the middle. Oh shit, that's a big old fucker. Middle yeah. of nowhere. Uh, and he must have really loved this country. Yeah. Well, he was part of the American Party. Uh, oh, oh. Wow. He, uh, you know, in the town, he he planted orchards uh, on his land for people in the town to to pick from. He he stocked. Uh, he paid to stock the the nearby river with fifteen thousand fish eggs. Mm. In order Caviar, to so huh? he could eat, yeah, so he exactly. could fish, uh, and then uh, at one point the town tried to throw a Fourth of July celebration without like without asking him about it, and in response to this, he then shut it down. He, he then paid a local band to throw a concert at his house, so everybody would come to his place. And then after this, the town was like, "Okay, fine, you're the Fourth of July guy now." And so, for the rest of his life, he would have fire, fireworks and concerts and shit at his Me? house before the July. Wow. What what a, a, wow what that's a, an honor. A, what a surprise honor. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> I couldn't. No. I mean, I... I, I get, get... If you insist. Do I get paid? <laughs> and so, he... he, he You're was, all eating my fish. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like Jesus. And so, he stayed at that house uh, for the rest of his life. Uh, he died in 1866. God, uh, just us. kind of like sickness and old age, and he he wrote some very, you know, very nice things about uh, how he wasn't able to fish anymore, and lamenting the fact that, you know, he, oh, hey. he couldn't he couldn't <laughs> be the rabble rouser he was. But uh, I used to really fuck shit up. Even when he died, his story wasn't over because after he died, his many many wives 
all claimed his fortune. The multitudes. Yes. They descended. And even... Did he have a fortune fortune? Well, well, he, he had sold giant hundreds, house. hundreds of thousands of books. Yeah, so. he had this giant house. Uh, there's even... The uh, sabers. He even, even, even there are women who didn't claim the fortune who were like, yes, also I have one of his kids. Holy shit. He had a lot of kids. No way. And a lot of women uh, that he slept with and a lot of wives. And, and they were... Some were adult. Hot. But still, it's, you know, they were, they were attractive. Single. I mean, he really liked his 18-year-old wife when he was 50 because she could keep up with him. Jesus. Keep hell. up with him? Yeah. In, in, uh, what, in what? the procreation department. Well, yeah, well, you know he, those 50-year-old guys in the prime of their here, youth. Here's a picture what? of him with her and her mother. And who's oh, his shit. age? Yeah. Oh, well, dude. That, that. And he's clowning them both? No. He is. They both look like Nixon. <laughs> But he, but he, uh, he, he. Oh my God! This guy's fucking hideous. <laughs> well, no. Scroll back through those pictures. You know, he's he's not a bad yeah, looking guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's younger. You he's just look, a fat. He's a fat old man there. You gotta look at him in the right light, dude. Light? Yes. I'm looking at even the good one where he looks like Teddy Roosevelt. This guy is older than the mom, his his wife and mom combined. Okay, all right, all right. Charm Just, goes a long way, Aaron. Just, that, I mean, exactly you might right. learn that one day. Oh, yeah. that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> what do I have to do? Just lie all the time? I, ref- I refuse to lie. I'm too honorable, sir. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm too honorable. <laughs> sir, I can't do it. Sir, I'm too honorable. If I see something wrong, I wish I could just ignore cannot, it. I cannot chop down this cherry tree in all honesty, sir. Wow. And so that's the story of Dead Buntline. He is America's first great dime novelist. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a guy who... Uh, I, they, it said he was friendly with Mark Twain. I assume... Uh, I mean, Mark Twain definitely... Uh, Learned a lot from him. Well, anything that's going, if Ooh. you're if you're in this is a good word. If you're yeah. in the word business in America, yeah, which is honestly at that time more predicated on like street gossip than reading shit. Because who can? Nobody. <laughs> Definitely not Aaron. <laughs> this guy wrote a lot of letters to somebody named Sister. Sister. And he wrote a lot of fucked up shit in here. This is one of these scathing letters. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it Irene? His sister, sister was Irene. Irene. Mm. Dear Irene, I'm irate. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Your body's whack. <laughs> Your tits are flabby. <laughs> uh, this is that what he said? A, this might be Irene. He says, uh, well, some of these words I can't even say. Aaron, can we? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that was really interesting. Was it? Yeah. All right, well. Yeah, that, no, that's his sister. He was uh, he was running when he uh, sick from the Civil War. What was he? What, what was uh, uh, racist, jingoistic, uh, and then uh, more racist and more, in ways I've never seen these words used. Very creative, really. Yeah, isms. Now, Matt, you'd probably feel comfortable saying those words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll save that letter for another you're time. Saying, you're, play, you're playing a part. Yeah, you, if you take it on a voice, it's not you doing it. <laughs> right, right. Thanks. <laughs> Do it in a French guy voice. <laughs> These letters. <laughs> if only I had known of your Dutch descent, you cloven hoof swine, big woman. China man has dead. <laughs> anyway, that's the story of Dan Buntline, the guy who, without him, I don't know what the American cowboy western, if that yeah. would even be a thing. Right. Because and he, uh, yeah, and it also shows he's how, the guy who made it. And, and would anybody else have? And it shows how it gets very quickly like homogenized, right? And 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 he made it not because he gave a shit about it, but because, like Bricklin says, he Tell was us. looking for a, a hero, always looking for a hero to write about. Yes, yep. yes, a hundred percent. And if it wasn't pirates, yep, here's the land pirate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Vampires weren't cool yet. Yes, exactly. And it's it's so funny because it really, you know, does the thing. Uh, like I told you, there was that great editorial that was like, was the rise of the antihero with Tony Soprano? Tony Soprano bring bad. It was that what led into the rise of Trump. 
And Ned Buntline himself is so Trumpy in a character. Yes. Uh, yes. But at the time, he knows it's the age of heroes. Right. So he is looking for heroes to exploit. Right. But he virtue. Him, so much virtue. Yes. But he himself is very much, you know, uh, working on a much more, you know, Kardashian level. Mm. Yep. Uh, like, right. And, and people and heroes, are there is still the exploitation of the he- Like, that's still the thing. It's still the like very vanilla heroism is still much more popular in the same way that like yes. we were talking about Big Bang Theory. It's just easier to digest. It, that lowest mm-hmm. common denominator type of story is always going to be and it way was, more popular. Yes, but it's the masses. But it's also like a thing of like you know getting people psyched. It is get, that's exactly what it is. getting people, getting people psyched. getting people psyched on especially going west and continuing this. <laughs> yeah. You know, European conquest of the new world. Right. And then you go like, well, don't you want to be the next fucking Buffalo Bill? Right. Or aren't you glad but, we uh, have a Buffalo Bill? Aren't you glad we have a Buffalo Bill? It does both. Yeah. It, it satisfies Mrs. Main Street and it inspires, you know, the young man to go westward, right? Right. Uh, you know, there's Captain a- America, the first adventure. <laughs> but it's. Hey, you know what? You know what you could do instead of shooting buffaloes? Sell tickets. And there's this kind of continuing theory of, like, you know, almost like we started as, like, almost, you know, a, a rebel people or something. Like, we're, we're, we're the outliers in the same way yeah. Australia yeah. is. And and the further west we go, the more we embrace that right. rebellious spirit. Well, I, I, th- I think in Buffalo Bill you can kind of see the, the taming of his anti-immigrant Rhetoric is him in that moment. Buffalo Bill killing Indians is instead of America hating. It's so much easier to bring all of these people together, these white yes. people, because instead of killing the immigrants, which we, could be uh-huh. all of these we'll white kill the people, people who were here before us. Yes, yes, and because at that point the white Europeans had outnumbered yeah. the natives. Who are immigrants that, and they just don't know it yet. <laughs> it, it, a minority you don't it, know it yet. It, 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 <laughs> no, I mean, the natives are immigrants. They just don't know it yet. That's, that's his state of mind. Yeah, in essence. They're, well, they're just the other. Yeah. You know, he goes from yeah, the immigrants. The, yeah. s- suddenly in his stories, the Irish can be the heroes as opposed to the villains. Yes. Yeah, and, and that the same is thing going happened to with 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 uh uh all with all, all the quote unquote whites and and blacks. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the the whole invention of the white race was to unify all the different European factions right. against non-whites. Right. Before that, it was you were Irish or Italian or German or Dutch or whatever. And then once they were like, oh, man, fuck, these free, these free black people are out now. We got to do something. To but bolt. that's it. Yes. It, it, it's, yes. It's, it's that thing that was the fucking the core question that is. Why? <laughs> it's the genesis of all of it. Is convoluted. Yeah, the, and it's going the like, idea of a white race didn't exist until. But it's you saying the end of slavery, it's, pretty it's, much. It's, here. it's you saying because it, you, they needed a you like, divide oh, and conquer. Or, or why are, are are Greeks and Italians considered Europeans? And homeboy going like Jesus Christ, because <laughs> they which is also an answer because they because <laughs> they invented the word Europe because civilization civilization started there, and you is some racist dude that's white thinks they're not because of things that happened like, you know, with like invading African tribes and stuff. Well, and, and I think he's also, I mean, I don't know what the rest of the question was, but also, I mean, no, Greece, why are they considered European? Right. And homeboy goes, they right, invented the word. Right. No, I get that. But also if you look at a map, Greece is like more Asia minor. Yeah. And yeah. it's, and Italy's close to, you know, they are sure. For they are as far south and as far east as you can go. Right. I mean, you know, you're. But however, if if you invent the word Europe, you would be like, well, why are the Finnish considered European? 
No, I, no, I get you, it. I know I you. It. I know you get it. But the question isn't mm-hmm. without merit. No, it's just done by somebody, an idiot. Yes, and uh, therefore yeah. it has no merit. Right. I, don't, I don't think we should bring Quora questions into the conversation. but let's ask Jeeves. But what I'm saying is, it, 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 it's just. You, you know, there's there's this ignorant, you know, shit, and and uh, people like they get swept up in all in like these just terribly stupid games. Well, I, you pe- know, pe- people pe- like people are looking for something that tells them they're okay for where they are and who they are, right? And sometimes uh, that means. Uh, you're better than someone, or or at least if I can't know who I am, I at least have to know what I'm not. Okay, yes. yeah, but if you're look, if if you are suddenly not one status, and then you become one, and you're not thinking about the people that are still not that status, you are a traitor, <laughs> and then everybody is. <laughs> so it, everybody is exactly. It happens. Everybody exactly. does. Exactly. As soon as the Cubans get the floor, so, they're like, oh, shut the yeah, water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you know. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm the last one in. Close the gate behind me. Yes. What happens at the club. Anybody mm. doing that, it's just you're I I am going to tell you you are pathetic to your face. You're our loser. Like you're trying to be safe. And that's great. But yesterday you weren't. You were persecuted. The KKK started as an anti Catholic organization. Right. And then they were like, what about these Jews and blacks? <laughs> You know what I mean? And they're like, okay, well, we'll put that on the back burner. We'll get to them eventually. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, oh, no, actually, they'll be your biggest supporters later. <laughs> you know, like, it's just like. We're not the Jews and blacks. No, no. I just mean, like, uh, Irish people would fall in as these, like, surrogate wasps. Yeah, yeah, And it's yeah. pathetic. It, <sighs> it's dis- and, and so that's, you know. I mean, it would, I mean, the Know Nothing Party having as much power as it did. I think it says a lot about the party, the fact that the topic of slavery basically killed the party because finally they met a topic that actually had real meaning mm-hmm. and they couldn't just scapegoat their way out of it. Well, I mean, it is inherently laden with a scapegoat. Well, that's what I mean. Like, that's how... Like we, that's how weak their art, their entire platform was. They were so used to having arguments of without substance, right? Yeah. And, and when and one came up, they're like, "Fuck, we don't know what to do." Yeah, right. We'll so, just say, we'll just, we'll, we'll take whatever you want, and then it's like, well, so that's like not buy a vowel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 basically, it's, it's, it's a weird broadside, right? Where you go, like, we thought uh, the fight was on the shore, <laughs> and you're like, no, it was it in, like, so, like, which one is right, and which one is America, and they go, like, we hadn't really about thought about that, so I don't you know, me, you tell me, <laughs> like, whatever you want, I'm cool with, we kind of took it as a given, sir, we hadn't really thought about the implications one way or another, can we talk about the Irish, <laughs> yeah. uh, but also, somebody as savvy as Buntline would be like, if he is, if, especially if he's the figurehead, mm-hmm. at least... Ideologically, mm-hmm. I was another thing. He would be like, he would see from the get go, like, oh, the North has all the resources; they're definitely going to win. There's no question. You yes. know what I mean? Well, and so it, that's it, reason to not take a stand I, too. I, I mean, he, like, I don't remember reading him taking any stances on slavery, but he was very patriotic and he joined the Union. But and, which country? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, like, yeah. I, I, that's the thing. Like it's like I mean, but also when he joined the union, it wasn't an anti-slavery union. Oh no, no, they were just no, no new, new slaves. No, they were new slaves. slaves. No, no yes. new slaves. Yeah, and that's why he's you know these the, ones are cool. Yeah, these ones are totally fine. Maryland is fine, <laughs> but anything else, anything wants and, to and, St. and Louis. again he goes like he goes to St. Louis, and is it because it's easy to stir up anti-German sen- sentiment? Because he probably could have stirred up. The Germans to fight the pro-slavery people, uh, right? Yeah. Or was it? Con- is it convenience? Did he give a shit about slavery, or was it convenience? His German accent was really bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, like, how much of what he did for his own power was convenience, but and how d- much of it divide and conquer always works? No, but uh, not necessarily even divide and conquer. Just what is the thing that will get me? 
popular. Right. It's way it, more Trump than master manipulator yeah, is what he's saying. Yeah. Like, and, uh, yeah, but you know, he's you part can, of it. I mean, maybe, but, 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 but divine, De- demonizing the other. Yes, but sometimes it's just an, an innate. Uh, that's not really master manipulation. That's yeah, basic yeah. shit. Yeah. And you can just be so good at that that you can get all the way. You can get really far yeah. if that's all you do. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you're a master manipulator. No, it, no, it means not you're single minded, right? Uh, I don't know if he was. I don't know how savvy he was with. Uh, you know, the interstate politics of the day right. rather than just being a survivor. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I suppose it's, it's it's easier to say when they're all German, you can take a group of people who are Irish yeah. and Scottish and British and Americans because it's really hard to attack each of them individually yeah. Yeah. because they're smaller groups. Yeah. It's easier to say, here's a large group of people you disparate folks, yeah. what if you all... You know you have in common? You're not them. Yeah. Exactly. And so I think we talked about it before with uh, uh, the fishermen of Northern Ireland. Oh, yeah. We're all... Out how out. how they were like... Out there, here? There was no fucking... It's swamp one. No sectarianism. Knit and maritime. There was just like, if you are fucking in trouble, like, like the sea is far scarier than... You know, some guy with a ski mask and a yeah. gun for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but, however, you obviously you go like, oh, okay, we'll extrapolate that. And you go like, okay, well, we all work together. We all do the same crazy shit. We're all willing to do it. We're all willing to take risks to provide for our families. Then why are we doing this on shore at all? And then if you, if you, you know... If you have that going, then you go like, oh, well, at the end of the day, that guy is, you know, obviously a, an apostate, savage, <laughs> Irish, Catholic, <laughs> uh, papist. <laughs> but oh, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, he really just wants to, like, feed his son. And then you, and you can empathize, right? But it takes some guy coming through it being like... It takes exposure. Like, yeah, it takes some guy coming through. And then, th- you, you know, you're, you're, the bubble of your awareness only goes so far. And some people, it's a little bit further. And mm-hmm. they can see more... They can see, you know, humanity as a whole. And some people... Can't. Right, but America's a little bit more of a mixing, like, you know, thing where you should have... But everybody's self... I mean, it's not a melting pot. That's no. a myth. No. Exactly. Nothing melts here. Everything coagulates into mm-hmm. little clusters. There's... It, that's a myth. Yeah, it's not a melting pot. It's just a bunch of people here. We, I mean, ideally it would really be, but it's not. That? It's not. It's, it's, it's not schoolhouse that. rock. Really? Yes, it's not a melting pot. There's Chinatown. We're in Chinatown. Yeah. Are you sure? People go. People go. Like, likes, like. And, and right now, Chinatown is is, is being uh, yeah. gentrified. It's yeah. still <laughs> not as stark as Europe can be. It's far more as Europe can be. N- is. I would say. You know, in England, I don't know if they, there's definitely racists, uh, but they have a very different. Uh, in England? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean they have a very, they, they started it. <laughs> what do you mean they have a no, very they, different, they, but gave an original idea of he, racism. And yet they, they have a different stopped, relationship. They have a different they, relationship with black people in in France and in England. Like it's a different. It, it there is. Yeah, it's a it's a divide and conquer. It's like you're cool and those people are savages. No, I, it's different than it is here. We we they've we been have, around longer. 80, 80 years ago. We put up statues of Civil War generals yes. in order to tell the black people in those places. Don't forget who runs this town. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, I completely agree. Yes. Yeah, so me, me, meanwhile, that's 100 like, years after England banned slavery. Yeah, but they were still willing to shore up support uh, but, for the Confederates. And, and they were willing to do slavery in other, other countries. Yeah. As without, long as, I mean, yes. But as it, long as it's, it's offshore, it's, a, it's, it's okay. a very It's a very different... Mm. It's just very different. And yeah, it's, it, I don't. It, it it hasn't been here. Our country hasn't been here long enough to be a melting pot. No. I'm just saying. Uh, the English like invented new divisions in people that they conquered. Like uh, I mean, they were 
They like are master, yeah, so? master manipulators. Yeah, yeah and but that, that, that's not my point. My point is that this country is not a melting pot. Yeah, not that the English aren't ma- <laughs> manipulators. <laughs> oh, right, but I do think it is. Why? Because it, I, ultimately, it's not uh, it, the the altar is the dollar, and it works towards. That's the same everywhere. I, th- I just think it's different here. Why? Because of my experience. We can't even the 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 American voter can't even melt together. What do you? Yeah. Mean? It's more divided than ever politically. Yeah. Like what? Is, what exactly is melting in the pot? Uh, nationality. I would say. Where are you from? First thing people. <laughs> in the, but well, where are you from? I I think I think in some sense, yes. Uh. Certainly compared to Europe, yes. But, I I mean, is it, has it ever really been such a smooth process? I mean, there's, there, definitely, absolutely, there, in, 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 in some instances, uh, you know, a Russian immigrant who came here as a kid, you know, they're American, they, they, I mean, have, they, I have, some, I, they have no I, accent. I think or, as a person that, like, grew up, like, 100% Irish. Yeah. And then, like... You know, you go to school and like people are like, I think I'm a little bit German and I might be like Swedish and I'm sort of like Scott. And you're like, you don't fucking know exactly where you come from. Like, dude, that doesn't happen. In I mean, you're right. You're it right. Doesn't. It doesn't. In, in, in that America it, is a melting pot. In, in, dude, you're no, wrong. No, no, no. It's, I, I, it's, I, we'll get we'll get on a Patreon on this because I'll show you why you're wrong. I don't I don't I don't think he's it doesn't happen over there. That's, everyone's been they're all the same over there. Well, They've well, all been okay. breeding for five thousand. Just, just because it doesn't happen over there, <laughs> but does, they still identify that way. Just because it doesn't happen over there doesn't mean it has happened here. They still however, identify that way. However, oh, that? this is a very fun topic for a non-three hour. Anyway, episode. Buffalo Bill. <laughs> now, where was he from? Buffalo. Yeah, he's from. Huh? Duh. Buffalo. The herd? <laughs> no. New York. He the killed 4,200 people in Buffalo. He before ate he... With one bullet. <laughs> he ate 50 wings in a sitting. <laughs> Guy's sick. No blue cheese. <laughs> he was blown dry. He was blowing through toll. No celery. Not a carrot stick. <laughs> Certainly no ranch. <laughs> Matt, that was lovely. It was really... I thought you would enjoy that. And then I thought we would have a very stupid conversation. After. And we did. And we, we did. Yeah. We did. We nailed it. Yeah. 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 We killed it. Yeah, we really did. We killed We killed it 4 to 200 times. And we busted myths. And we and repopulated the, the buffalo. <laughs> yeah. Thanks uh, to the genocide of the Native American Jesus population. Jesus Christ. You go, okay. He's, you're going to have to talk about that. Uh, I'll talk about that, too. He is a... Not saying it's a good specifically, thing. Specifically... Uh, Impactful Americana figure. Yes, it did. It, 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 uh, Especially yeah. in, in terms of uh, the myth and propaganda and everything that comes yes. afterward. Yes. If half the fucking stock is his shit. Yeah. Like I was saying, like there's no way people are ripping this off. Like I mean, from from dime, dime novels to just publishing in general to newspaper shit. To yeah. then to propaganda the, being being more important than I, I, the news, like it is. I don't know what this country would look like without the mythos of Buffalo Bill in the American West spreading across yeah. almost the entire globe. Yeah, it 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 it's absurd. Yes, and that's absurd. I do think. In, in uh, supporting my own point, he did have a big, all, he had a big, yeah, he had a giant. No, it was really big and it looked like a seal. <laughs> <laughs> had whiskers. It it would bark well, he, was, he was in the navy. <laughs> it would bark at you. Yeah. That's but I do think seal. it was it was a thing too where yeah, I think do you think because it is more of a melting pot, they had to actually wrangle more propaganda to make it more of a fucking like you know monolith of. America first bullshit. Oh yeah, oh that you know I mean, what I mean. That, that was an e- that was an easy thing, and that's a thing we'll talk about <laughs> in the future. <laughs> At some <laughs> nebulous, undefined point in the future. I'm gonna say good night. I love you. My name is John Fahey.
I'm Michelangelo's David Duchovny, and I demand tribute. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Brousseau. Good night, everybody. We love you. Good night. Good night. Stop it, stop it.